This is Retro Sports Radio. Visit RetroSeasons.com for more sports history. The Cincinnati Reds faced the Chicago Cubs for a Thursday afternoon game at Wrigley Field on July 28, 1977. The Reds were coached by Sparky Anderson and were coming off back-to-back World Series championships in 1975 and 76. They entered the game with a 49-48 and record. The Cubs were coached by Herman Franks. Franks had had success as a manager with the Giants in the late 60s, averaging 92 wins in his four years in San Francisco, but never managing to finish higher than second place. 1977 was Franks' first year in Chicago, and the Cubbies were starting off hot with a 59-39 and record going into this game with the Reds. This is the local Chicago radio broadcast featuring announcers Vince Lloyd and Lou Boudreaux. Ray Burris is starting as scheduled today, but Tom Seaver, who was slated to go, is still sidelined with a flu bug that has hit him, and so coming out of the bullpen to make his very first major league start, a right-hander, Dale Murray. He's warming up down the right field line. For Sparky Anderson in the Reds today, Pete Rose will be leading off, playing at third base. Ken Griffey, batting second today, have been flip-flopping Rose, Rose and Griffey in this series. Griffey in right field, and he'll be followed by veteran Joe Morgan at second base, with George Foster in left field, Foster batting cleanup. Johnny Bench doing the catching, hitting fifth. Cesar Geronimo in center field, batting sixth. Dave Concepcion at shortstop, batting in the number seven spot, with Mike Lum replacing the injured Danny Dreesen over at first base. Lum hitting eighth. Dale Murray coming out of the bullpen, where he has won five, lost two this year. Tall right-hander whom they obtained from the Montreal Expos. Tony Perez was involved in that deal. Murray, in addition to his five victories, has three saves. For the Cubs this afternoon, Yvonne DeJesus to lead off at shortstop. Larry Bittner batting second, and he'll be in left field. Bill Buckner started the uh, one of the first game yesterday. Will be at first base today, and Buckner hitting third. With Bobby Mercer in right field, Mercer batting cleanup. Jerry Morales up among the league leaders. He is second to Dave Parker in hitting in the National League starting today. Six points behind Parker. Jerry hitting 333. He'll be in center field. And Steve Ontiveros at third base batting sixth. With Manny Trio at second. Trio batting seventh. And George Middlewald again doing the catching. And Ray Burris with his last outing dropped behind the league for the year. He's now 9 and 10 on the season. Pause here for station identification. We'll be right back. This is the WGN Chicago Cubs Baseball Network. This is WGN Radio Chicago. Ray Burris has uh, now a four-game losing streak, and let's hope that he can end that one here this afternoon. I'm sure a lot of you fans will remember the last victory that Ray was able to post and that was here at Wrigley Field against the New York Mets back on the 25th of June. Remember? He had gone all the way, and going into the bottom of the ninth inning, it looked like he was going to be a loser in it because the Cubs were trailing in the ball game, 4-1. to one. And miracle of miracles, they wound up with four runs in the inning to win it by a score of 5-4. to four. And that happens to be Ray Burris' last victory. He has a kind of a suspended victory going, too, and that also was against the Mets. On the day in New York, when he, uh, the night in New York, rather, when he pitched in the blackout game, carrying a lead in that ball game into the seventh inning. And let's hope that uh, when that one is resumed and the Cubs go back into New York at Chase Stadium for their final visit into New York this year, that they'll be able to hold on to that lead and Ray will get himself a victory. As it is, when you add up the number of games that the Cubs have played, they don't quite uh, total out as to the game number, for example, that this one is. This is their 99th game of the season. And they say, well, now, well, how can that be? Because they won 58 and lost 39. So this should be the 98th game. Well, that suspended game is still uh, considered in there. And that's how you come up with that difference. The records that the guys posted in that one uh, have been entered on their totals for the year. Their hits, their runs batted in, 
No, there weren't many in that suspended game. But that's the reason for the discrepancy that you have in the number of games played as against the total wins and losses. Here at home this year, the Cubs have done exceptionally well. They've won 34, lost 17. And, of course, most ball clubs will play a whole lot better on uh, their home field than they will when they get on the road. The same is true of the Cincinnati Reds. There are 10 games over the 500 mark at their, their ballpark where we'll be playing on Monday night, Tuesday night, and Wednesday night. They've won 29 there, lost 19. On the road, it's something else. The Reds are just one game over 500. Or, I'm sorry, they're nine games under 500. 20 and 29, and that's the reason why they're only one game over the 500 mark for the year. They've not been able to win with any consistency on the road. Pete Rose has got the lineup card for Sparky Anderson out at home plate with the Peanuts Lowry of the Chicago Cubs, the third base coach. The umpire behind the plate today will be Andy Olson, a veteran. Rookie Jerry Crawford will be at first base. Doug Harvey, veteran uh, at second. And Paul Pryor, who worked behind the plate in the second game yesterday, will be at third base this afternoon. Ray has one victory and one defeat at the hands of the Cincinnati Reds this year. Burris went all the way to beat uh, Cincinnati here at Wrigley Field earlier in the season. That was, uh, I think, back on the 24th of April. Then when he started against them just about a week or so later over at their ballpark, they KO'd him in a hurry. Worked only one inning, and he was wild. He walked five. And gave up three hits and was charged with five runs. A couple of men who were on base when he left the ball game scored off the uh, reliever, but all of them, of course, were charged against Ray. So he is one and one for the year against the Cincinnati Reds. His earned run average is a high one, and I know that uh, he, of course, would like to get it down. And we're hopeful, all of us, that he's going to be able to come on strong the last part of the 1977 season with the kind of a finish that he had last year. And that, of course, would bode very, very well for the Cubs, who need uh, a strong performance in a consistently strong performance from fellows like Ray and from Bill Bonham to go along with Rick Russell, Mike Grucco, to keep the uh, Cubs either in that number one spot or contending for it the rest of the year. Here they come out of that dugout in the third base side. Bill Buckner, number 22, trotting out the first base. 15, George Menewall behind the plate. Ray Burris, 34, out to the mound. Number seven, Bobby Mercer out to right field, and they're going to get a standing ovation. Gary Morales out to center. Larry Bittner to left field. Yvonne to Jesus at shortstop. Steve Onavares over at third. Manny Creo has not yet come out of the dugout. Here he comes, number 19. And the folks are giving him a standing ovation at Wrigley Field. Kind of an overcast day. The temperature here on the warm side, 81 degrees. The ballpark temperature at game time. And the wind today is in favor of the hitters, blowing out at 15 miles per hour. Now, Vance Fothergill at the organ with our national anthem. Take time out for this message. How do Americans perceive the automobile? 
Well, for years it was considered a luxury, but as of late, a convenience. But today, people want more of their autos, and to get it, they're turning to high performance. Gas-saving machines that provide precision handling and sports car excitement. They're turning to Chicagoland's newest Fiat Lancia dealer, Fireside Imports of Schaumburg. Fireside's vast inventory of foreign autos allows you to see, test drive, and compare the world's finest performance cars all in one visit. Fireside's superb collection of exciting Fiats and luxury Lancias combined with their large selection of Mazda's gas-saving great little cars to help make one-stop shopping a reality. So if you're looking for an imported car, remember, Fireside Imports has an auto to fit your needs at a discount price that most little foreign car dealers just can't match. If you want more from a car and more from a dealer, visit Fireside Imports on Gulf Road, just west of the Woodfield Shopping Center in Schaumburg. Pete Rose stepping in. It was so far in the series, and his batting average now standing at 3.06 to wind up in Burris. His first pitch, fastball that misses just outside. Ball one to the switch inning veteran row. Half a dozen homers for him. 41 runs batted in. Wind up in the pitch. Rose takes. It's a strike right at the letters. A fastball to level the count at one and one. Ken Griffey in the on-deck circle to be followed by Joe Morgan. Burris gets his sign, the right-hander's next pitch. Swung on, deep drive, right field, look out. Back to the wall is Fisher, and it is gone. A home run just over the 358-foot mark for Pete Rose. And here he comes, he's not crowding, he's running around the base. The Reds with a one to nothing lead on the third pitch of the ball game. marks the 19th home run given up by Ray Burris. Line shot. Ken Griffey stepping in, hitting 323. Left-hander, 5 for 12 in the series, and he takes a strike. Rose had come to town hitting 316. He dropped 10 points, and he got one of them back in a hurry. That's a ball, ball one, strike one to Griffey. But the Reds pitching has left a lot to be desired this year. They continue to hit that long ball with great authority. Here's a swing and a bouncing ball fouled on the first base side, grabbed by Buckner, just past coach Russ Nixon. They now have 118 team homers this year. They have allowed the opposition 88. Joe Morgan in the on-deck circle and a count on the batter, Ken Griffey. Ball one, strike two. Phillies, by the way, will be getting underway out of Los Angeles in about an hour and a half. Here's a swing and a foul ball out of play. Good fastball. Ball one, strike two. Milwaukee and Boston are playing at Fenway Park this afternoon. White Sox and Detroit Tigers are off in the American League. And the San Francisco Giants and the New York Mets are idle in the National League. Montreal and San Diego are also idle. Wind up in the one-two pitch. Griffey takes the fastball low and inside. Ball two, strike two. The Orioles and the Yankees are underway at Yankee Stadium. Baltimore, a big winner over them last night. The Orioles now with a two-game lead over Boston, three over the Yankees. Two-two delivery. Griffey swings, deep drive, right field. Pressure coming over to his right, gets it on the first hop. Griffey lines a single to right field. And the first two Cincinnati Reds have reached. A homer by Rose, a single by Griffey. And it's another shaky start for Ray Bird. Joe Morgan, the batter. Oh, Joe, one for 12 in the series. Hitting 294. He got to town Tuesday. He was hitting 303. Now down to 294. Burris from the stretch to Speedy Grippy. Pretty good lead. Here's the pitch. Low into the dirt. And Mitterwald keeping an eye on the runner as he uh, 
scrambles for the ball on the first base side of the plate. Ball one. Down to one and all. Oh, the veteran Morgan, who has 14 homers. Stretched by Ray. Here's a low kick and a pass ball swung out of this. Kept it down on the way. Ball one, strike one. In that game today, between the Yankees and the Orioles, Rudy May going for Baltimore, going after his 12th one of the year. Mike Torres for the Yankees, 8 and 10. Lob toss over the first base, the runner back safely. Hines and Faxon for Milwaukee and Boston, respectively, at Fenway Park. Another throw to first base, and he jumps back in safely. Ball one, strike one pitch. Mercer very deep in right field. The pitch to Morgan swung out, slaps the ground ball. Trio on the grass, has it close to first. Morgan is all safe at first base. And they have runners at first and second. Buckner dove out of that. Outfield dirt there that's been sprinkled lightly in front of his uniform is Muddy. Rio cutting over behind him, well over onto the grass on the right side. Very, very close play as he whipped that throw to first. He's just a little late coming out of the bag with his foot. It was very, very close, but the call from Jerry Crawford goes in favor of Morgan and the Reds. With nobody out, leading one to nothing, have runners at first and second. At the Major League's leading home run hitter and leading run batted in guy, George Foster, the batter. Hitting 315, Foster with 32 homers and 96 runs batted in. Credit Morgan with an infield hit. Burris' is first pitch high with a fastball, and Donnie Moore is up and throwing already in the Cub bullpen. Foster, driven in three runs in the series, is five hits, including a homer. Seems like this guy never cools off. Nobody out. Runners at first and second. A long look at Grippy at second. The pitch goes after a fastball around the shoulders and fouls it back upstairs out of play. It's one and one on him. Johnny Bench in the on deck circle. Dubs after dropping the first game yesterday, 6-2, to two, came back with five runs in the eighth to capture the nightcap, 5-1. to one. And, of course, they won the opening game of the series on Rick Russell's superb shutout, 3-2. to Ducker. 1-1 delivery coming up to Foster. Swing out of this. Good slider. Ball one, strike two. Closest to Foster in the National League in homers, Mike Schmidt of the Phillies, who now is 27, five fewer than uh, Foster. His 96 runs batted in are 13 more than his nearest pursuer in that category, Steve Garvey of the Dodgers. A look at second to pitch. Swung out of it. Good delivery. The hold of Elf in the inside corner, hands up. Big strikeout. Johnny Bench stepping in. That is 1,000 run let it in. Some cheers and some boos for this guy. Hitting 270. 22 homers and 71 runs by it in. The veteran catcher, Johnny Bench, a right-hander, of course, holds the bat high over the right shoulder. Versus first pitch high, and he's out in front of it. Drills it deep, but foul. Thank heaven. Speedy Grippy at second base. Even speedier Morgan on at first. 0-1 delivery to Johnny Bench. First fire. Swing and a deep drive left field. It is going to be over the wall. A home run. He got that one up a bit and Bench really liked it. Bittner just looked and hoped that the ball might not go over the wall but tear him back off of it. 
Hit cleared it. And it is now four to nothing. Cincinnati. That marks the 20th home run right off of Ray. Well, Louie pitched well to Foster and then really grilled one here to bench. Well, all it does is take one pitch for this lineup, but it's gone. Especially with that wind blowing out. We may have five or six more home runs before this day is over. Well, let's hope that the next three or four will be by the Cubs. Geronimo stepping in. Left-handed hitter takes a strike. He's three for ten here at Wrigley Field in this series. Batting 272. Tall left-hander. 0-1 pitch. Swung on. Deep drive. Left field. Bittner going back. Back to the warning crack. He's there and he grabs it. One-handed for out number two. There's been an infield single. There's been a strikeout. But there have been some very hard shots. Bench is Homer with two men on. His 23rd of the year. And he now has 74 runs by the end. Dave Conceptia has been blank so far here at Wrigley Field, hitting 281. He's dropped nine points. He swings and fouls a first pitch over to the box seats in the first base side. Strike one. Davey with a half a dozen homers, driven in 34 runs this year. Versus fastball sink low, ball one, strike one. Great Eli Schulman out this afternoon with Cy Gold and Holly Betno, both the record company executives. At the pitch, a little bit low, ball two, strike one. And they also brought with them Bob Lubliner. They barely settle in their seats before they see four runs on the board for the Reds. It's a little off that pitch and it's low. Ball three, strike one. Pete Rose opened it with his seventh homer of the year. A couple of singles, a strikeout of Foster, and then Bench lined a solid homer over the left field wall. Geronimo has lined hard to Bittner. And now the count is ball three, strike one on Davy Concepcion. Here's the pitch. Swung on, foul down the right field line, out of play, ball three, strike two. We'll be at Cincinnati tomorrow night, Saturday night, Sunday afternoon, then over at Cincinnati for night games, Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. Three, two, pitch. Swung on. Ground ball. Deep in the hole. Out of air. So the grass house, no play. Concepcion is on with an infield single. Five hits in the inning. Two of them home runs. Four runs of Kelly. And Mike Lum, two for seven, running in for the injured Danny Dreesen, who hopes to be back in the lineup when they uh, leave town and start this series tomorrow. He's hitting just 167. 11 hits for him, include a homer and 8 runs batted in, 1 RBI in the series. Two out, runner at first. Concepcion just might go, not on this pitch. He takes, it's a strike at the letters. An off day for four clubs in the National League. And for the White Sox and the Tigers in the American League. Go to first, Concepcion. Balls back on the bag, safely hit first. Davey with 21 stolen bases this year. Has been caught stealing only five times. Four, nothing, top of the first with two off. Another throw. Almost got him that time. A good quick tag by Buckner. Moore continuing to throw in the cup bullpen. Mercer just in front of the curve in the bleacher wall in right field. Morales very deep in center. Same for Bittner in left. Fastball high and away. Ball one, strike one. Win today in contrast to what we've had the first three days of this series is blowing out about 15 miles per hour. And it's a bit overcast. 
just a touch on the sticky side. Temperature in the low 80s. And Burris with a 1-1 delivery. The kick to pitch. Fastball for a strike over the outside corner. Ball one, strike two. Two homers here in this first inning by the Reds. Pete Rose, Johnny Bench. Go to first, and Concepcion again is to fall in on all fours to avoid being picked off. Stretch by Burris. Here's the pitch. Swung on at a high deep drive. Left out. Holy mackerel. That's way, way back in the bleachers. A hanging breaking ball. And Mike Clark has given the Reds a six to nothing lead. His 12th base hit of the year, his second home run. Fans are clamoring for a change. Well, they're rejoicing over in the first base dugout. Pretty glum looking. On the opposite side of the field, the ninth man of the batting order, pitcher Dale Murray, in his first major league start before he throws the first pitch. He'll have at least a six to nothing lead. Right hander swings late, fouls that one down the right field line after looking at a ball. One one delivery. Blown outside. Ball two, strike one. Murray, because he's worked primarily in short relief, has only been up six times this year. There's a strike. Ball two, strike two. We're in the first inning. Six to nothing. Cincinnati. Bases are empty. They have three home runs so far. Out of two and two on the hitter. Wind up by Burris. Fastball. Got a piece of it. Fouled it out of play. Into the upper deck on the first base side. And it's still 2-2 two and two on him. Here's the wind up. 2-2 two, two pitch. Swung out of missed and a curve for strike three. They have that as well. And this crowd is bully. Six runs. Six hits. Three of those hits are home runs. One with the bases empty, one with two men on, and one with one man on. Bases left empty, and after a half inning, the Cubs have a hill to climb. The red six, the Cubs nothing. You can count on us for savings. You can count on us for quality. You'll find the best of every season at your Eagle Produce Department. This weekend, choose California long white potatoes. Only 99 cents. A 10-pound bag at your Eagle Produce Department. With everything a supermarket should be, doing everything a store should do. I've learned a lot since coming up in 1966, and not just about baseball. I've learned you don't have to smoke to enjoy tobacco. I'm Bobby Mercer, and you can start enjoying tobacco without smoking, too. Try mild, happy days mint. It's smokeless tobacco. Just a pinch between your cheek and gum, and you've got full tobacco pleasure. Whether you're cutting the lawn or cutting down a base runner, mild, happy days mint. Have you tried it yet? last year and in his career in the majors he has worked only in relief and this year he has been in 39 ball games for Sparky Anderson and the Reds the run average is not a great one at all in fact it's pretty high 4.71 especially high for relief pitchers he's won 5 lost 2 very first major league start and DeJesus stepping in takes the fastball for a very first strike 
In 65 innings, he's given up 78 base hits and walked 28. Struck out 28 also. Big right hander delivers to Jesus. Takes the fastball in tight. Ball one, strike one to Yvonne. One hit in the series, a triple that triggered the five-run explosion in the eighth inning of yesterday's second game. But batting now only 251 for the year. 1-1 one, one pitch. Looks at a ball outside. Ball two, strike one. Murray winds, 2-1 pitch. In very tight at the belt, ball three, strike one. He's 27 years of age. Native of the big state of Texas, in the little town of Cuero, Texas. 6'4", about 205. Last, here's a swing and a deep drive. Left field. Hey, it's back there. It's off the line for excavation. There's the throw for Buster. He's five. He is in with a double. Walking up the bottom in the first inning on a 3-1 delivery. Well, Ivan is up that triple to trigger the eighth inning in yesterday's uh, ball, second game. Opens up the bottom of the first with a two-base hit. His 14th double of the year at his 98th hit of the season. But Murray got behind and had to pay the price. Larry Bittner, four for 11 in the series, hitting 294, steps in with eight homers and 41 runs batted in. It was 81 appearances that Murray was in uh, last year for Montreal, most in the league. Short arms, that pitch, and it's high, ball one. 81 relief appearances. He had only four victories, but he still was an outstanding pitcher. 1-1 one, one delivery. Sinker outside. He was in 30 of Montreal's 55 victories last year. More than half of them. He appeared in. He had a real hot streak at one time. Fastball, the tails outside. Ball three. Seventy-four through seventy-six. He did not allow a home run in two hundred and forty-seven and a third consecutive innings. Streak finally ended last August. Bobby Mercer. There's a ball too high. Bittner walks. Nobody out. The Aces at second. Buckner the batter. Bobby Mercer. Then with the Giants, the fellow ended that streak of. Homerless consecutive innings by Dale Murray. It was only the second home run that he had allowed in pro ball, and the other had come in uh, 74 off the bat of Houston's Bob Watson. There, as it can be determined, that's the longest homerless string in the post World War II area. Butner. Picking a bunt, takes a fastball outside. Buckner, two for four in yesterday's game, hitting 285. He has a couple of homers, 24 runs batted in. Six to nothing Reds, bottom of the first inning, nobody out. The pitch, fastball, takes for a strike on the inside corner. Ball one, strike one. The Reds got three homers and six runs in the top of the first inning. If you came in late, you didn't miss much, huh? 1-1 one, one pitch. Checks his swing. It's outside. Ball two, strike one. Got behind the Jesus on the 3-1 pitch. Ripped a double off the vines in left center field. Walked Bittner on four pitches. Now has a 2-1 count on Buckner. The look, the pitch. Fastball swung out. Deep drive. Right center field. Got a chance.
wing of the bat. Buckner has trimmed the Reds' lead in half. Shane Dale Murray, who had gone so many innings, 247 and a third, without allowing a homer. That streak snapped by Bobby Mercer, who now steps in. Takes the fastball for a strike at the knee. Bobby hitting 272. 14 homers, 60 runs, but it is. Murray winds. Sidearm pitch, he's out in front, he led up on it, fouls it down the line. Let's pause for station identification. This is the WGN Chicago Cubs Baseball Network. This is WGN Radio Chicago, one minute after two. Score of this one may wind up like the Fat Man softball picnic average score. Wind up the 0-2 pitch. High, wasted it, ball, one strike two. Six to three. Nobody out, bottom in the first inning, the Reds with the six. Gonna say what's going on here. One, two pitch, fastball swung out, deep drive, left field. That may be. Luther, with a bell ringer, and it's six to four. Out to the field, home. for him this year. Still nobody out. It is now a two-run lead. Jerry Morales will be the hitter. Dale Murray may long remember his first start in the major league. Pedro Borbon now throwing in the Cincinnati bullpen. Morales takes the first pitch of strike. As I mentioned earlier, Jerry, the second leading hitter in the National League, 333. Seven homers, 56 runs batted in. Takes that one into the dirt. Came out over the top, and it was into the dirt about three feet in front of the plate. Bounced to the backstop. Ball one, strike one. Ball too high. Ball two, strike one. So far, only five home runs here at Wrigley Field today. And Mercer with an opposite field shot. There's a swing and a miss, two and two. Ten runs have been scored. All of them come, have uh, combined or come in on homers. Here's a swing and a high pop up. The first baseman, Mike Lund, shading his eyes down the line. He's got it in fair territory. First out in the bottom of the first. And Steve Ottavar stepping in. He's hitting 287. Seven homers for Ottavar. Including one in the first game yesterday. 38 runs batted in. Avon of Harris has seven homers. Four have been hit here at Wrigley Field. A one pitch, a fastball, and he takes a strike. Borbone continuing to throw in their bullpen. 6 4. One away, nobody on. Let right up as high, ball one, strike one. Manny Trio in the on deck circle. Wind blown out. You can sure tell it. 1-1 pitch is high. Ball two, strike one. The Cubs now with 65 home runs for the year against 70 by the opposition. 2-1 pitch. Strike call with a good fastball, letter high way. Ball two, strike two. And 40 of the Cubs 65 homers have come here at home this year. 25 on the road. 2-2 2-2 pitch. Gets out in front. Rips a deep foul down the right field line into the boxes. Ball to strike two.
Cubs now have played 51 games in the road. They're at home. Well, at 29, left at home after this one today. There's a foul ball down the left field line. And 46 have been played on the road. Well, we got 35 to play away from Wrigley Field, and here is strike three on Steve Onovaris. So they're two gone. Bases empty for Manny Trio. Manny hitting 297. Two for 10 in the series with a run batted in. He has five home runs. 43 runs batted in. In case you just joined us, the ball game started pretty much on time. There's a swing and a little number foul on the third base side. But there's been a lot of action. The Reds batted around in the top of the first inning. They had three home runs. Pete Rose to lead off the ball game. Johnny Bench with two men on. Mike Lum with a man on. And the Cubs, after a double that a walk, saw Billy Buckner shave that lead in half with his third homer of the year. Bobby Mercer followed that one with an opposite field home run. Now they're two gone, and that pitch is high. Ball one, strike one to Manny Trio. And Dale Murray's first major league start. Bottom of the first with two away, 1-1 one, one pitch. Very high. Ball two, strike one. Thick fellow tucks the glove under his arm, rubs up the ball, touches the rosin back for a moment or two, drops it, climbs back up on the hill to get his sign. Creel, well away from the plate, and up in the batter's box, 2-1 delivery. Swung on, bouncing ball to Concepcion on the shortstop on the second half. And the Cubs are retired in the first inning. But four runs on three base hits, two of them homers. Nobody left on. At the end, the one... This may be quite a day before it's all over. Cincy, six, the Cups, four. If homeowners waited for inflation to turn around before they repaired or improved their homes, the old neighborhood might be a little more run down than you'd expect. So whether you're adding a room, building a garage, or putting in a new sidewalk, friendly Bob Adams understands there's a lot of people like you. So he's ready with your General Finance Corporation home repair loan. Call friendly Bob at Andover 32020. There's someone willing to listen, ready to help. You'll like the fast, famous, friendly Bob Adams service. And General Finance's courteous yet confidential manner. Friendly professionals who know about problems like yours. You'll be pleased at how simply and easily your loan can be arranged. All you have to do is pick up your money at your convenient General Finance office, then get started on your home improvement project. Call General Finance Corporation at Andover 32020. That's Andover 32020, where you can borrow up to $10,000. There are over 65 offices in the Chicagoland area. Also an office in McHenry. The five home runs at Wrigley Field in this uh, one inning... It's not a new major league record. It is the 13th time that it has been done in the majors. Last time in the National League, August of 1970. Pirates hit three and the Atlanta Braves two in one inning. Pete Rose, who started the fireworks with a homer, steps in, swings, fouls, a fastball out of play. Well, strike one counter. Welcome here today to Herb Lockman, advertising agency executive. Bobby Kaufman, Roberta Kaufman. There's a swing ground ball to Manny Creel. He's got it. Pete Rose. Out. Open up the second inning. Ken Griffey will be the hitter. He singled into right field. Got the second on Morgan's infield hit. After Foster struck out, Johnny Bench walloped his 23rd homer of the year. See it first, can hold them in check for a while. Base is empty. First pitch, Griffey swings, a drive in the right field. Mercer coming on, he's got it. Shoulder high, catch on the line drive, and he hit a bullet. Two guard. Morgan with an infield single. 
On the run scored, steps in. The note here that this Mr. John Conarchy, Conarchy, who must be the proudest father at the ball game today, it's his birthday, and also that of his daughter Janie, who's 16, and his oldest son Jack, who's 14. They got their mother along with them, and the sisters. 1 0 pitch. Strike called in the outside corner. 1 1. Like they got the whole family. Little Aaron is 5. Edmund is 9. Sheila's 7. She had her birthday yesterday. Sheila did. 2 1 pitch. That one missing. The two youngest were 4 2. They had to leave at home. As they strike. Fastball right at the letters. 2 and 2. Two-two delivery. Gets under the fastball. Morgan fouls it back. Kanarki tells us who all his children got a little smarts. They use the Cubs' new phone number for tickets and charge it to Dad's Visa card. <laughs> there the ball. Ball three, strike two. Celebrate their birthday. Burris is 3-2 pitch. Morgan swings. A drive into center field. Morales is there. He's got it. What a contest. First inning, they bat around, score six runs. And this inning, a ground out. A hard winder off the bat of Grippy. And a drive to Morales in center field, so they go down in order. And the Cubs, who got four runs on a pair of homers in the bottom of the first inning, will have Minerwall, Burris, in the top of the batting order up. Since he leading six to four. When you brew a beer once, you've got a good beer. But when you brew a beer twice, you've got a great light beer. A great light beer called Old Style from God's Country. Heilemann's Old Style is brewed in a traditional old world way called poisoning. Croisning is the most natural way to brew beer and the most expensive. Most expensive because it takes more time. But Heilemann has been brewing beer this way since we first opened our doors back in 1853. Croisning is what makes Old Style the great light beer it is today. Taste the difference Croisning makes. Try Old Style. Pure brewed in God's country. Heilman Brewing Company, La Crosse, Wisconsin. Just giving the probable pitching assignments tomorrow night at Houston. And our network air time tomorrow, 7.30. And 15 minutes prior to that, Lou and I will be on to talk a little baseball with you tomorrow evening. Rick Russell and Joe Necro are the probable pitchers at the Astrodome tomorrow night. George Minerwall stepping in against Dale Murray. George hitting 250. Takes the first pitch outside ball one. He has a half a dozen homers, driven in 29 runs for the year, one in the series. Well, uh, they're going to correct it and move Bonham in there where we thought he should be. And Russell will go Saturday. Well, Bonham tomorrow night. One one pitch. Checks his swing at a fastball. In too close. Ball two, strike one on George Middleball. Leading off the spot of the second. And there's a sinker low, three and one. Thurman Munson of the Yankees got his 14th homer of the year in the bottom of the third inning. That's the 100th of his career. And the Yankees now are leading the Orioles, three to one in the bottom of the third. Milwaukee, Boston, no score, bottom of the second. 
And in about 45 minutes, the Phillies and the Dodgers will be getting underway. There's a swing, deep drive. That one's gone. Way, way back to the wall. Over the wall. Out of the ballpark. Six to five. Pitches. to be the day low and we have a home run pool. Never mind a hit and run, just the home run. Dale Murray. Played one in at first. Way over the left center field bleachers, over the wall, out on the street. First takes the ball. Chucks his swing, the ball at his bat, skips foul into the seats in the first base side. Big George, his seventh homer of the year. Fastball swung on, fouled it right near the plate, and he wound up staggering in front of home plate for the cut he took. Ball one, strike two. Wild one. And we're only in the bottom of the second inning. With the bases empty and nobody out. Borbone again throwing in the Cincinnati bullpen. Wind up. Murray's next pitch swung on. There's a fly ball dropping out in the left field area and it's in for a base hit. Murray's going to try for two. He is in with a double. That's the tying run at second base with nobody out. Ray Burris's second double of the year. Out of eight, base hits. Dump one in a shallow left field. Of course, with this wind blowing out, hot fielders are deep for just about everybody. And Sparky Anderson, the silver-haired skipper, just now crosses the first baseline, makes sure he doesn't touch it. And he's going to bring in Pedro Borbon right now. The Reds with six runs, six hits. The Cubs... Five runs, five hits, and the tying run in scoring position. With nobody out in the bottom of the second inning, let's take time off for this message. Some people only sell paint. True Value Hardware stores make it. And who knows more about paint than the manufacturer? True Test Paint from True Value Hardware stores has become one of the nation's best-known, fastest-growing brands. True Test Paint like Weatherall Acrylic Latex House Paint. It applies like a latex, wears like an oil base, and protects your home from all kinds of weather. And True Test Easy Care Latex Flat Enamel with a hard enamel finish. Most stains just wash away, so you won't have to repaint as often. Yet it still has the soft look that complements any room in your home. And Easy Care has earned the good housekeeping seal. Easy Care and Weatherall are among the many True Test paints made in True Value Hardware Store's own factories. And they are among the most efficient and modern paint factories in the paint industry. So when you want quality and real paint know-how, go to the paint maker. You're participating True Value Hardware Store because True Value is more than just a name. It's their way of doing business. Bob well, Bowen getting in his warm-up process. A little while ago, Dick Dozer, I believe it was Dick Dozer, the Tribune, making the announcement that the five home runs in the first inning by these two ball clubs tied a major league record for homers in one inning. Western Union now reports over here from Wrigley Field that those home runs are the most hit in one inning with play in the National League. Well, they'll get it straightened out. Well, that's his National League now. Yeah. He said Major League. Those are no, he also said the National League. Did he he gave the record National for that. League? Yeah, National League, Pittsburgh, three, Atlanta, two, and August 1st, 1970. Go back to the books for that one. Well, my eyes are too red to read any books today. Maybe they'll hit even more before it's over with. Like the Cubs five in an inning, since he may be only two with the bases empty. 
Yvonne to Jesus against Borbon. Takes him. It's a ball one strike, one count on him. Pedro, five and four for the year with seven saves. Catch delivers. Breaking ball low. Ball two, strike one. He wouldn't chase that curve ball low. That's the pitch that's gotten him into a lot of trouble lately. He opened up the first inning with a double off the wall in left field. Slaps a fly ball down the right field line. The wind uh, pushing it, pushing it, and it drops still out of the reach of the right fielder, Griffey. The last couple of days, the wind blowing in would have pushed that ball well back into the boxes. This time it kept it from going in there, but it was still foul out of play. And they're still searching the record books. Two-two pitch. Slots a ground ball to the first baseman. It will advance first to third. He drops the ball. Safe at first base. Mike Brown had a very easy play on a little easy ground ball that your Aunt Mary could have handled. They just plain dropped it. He can't believe it himself. Looked at the glove as though it'd be pretty. Had it right in the pocket. Started up the line. Whoops. Put it out. Went, in, went over into foul territory. Pitcher wasn't over to take the throw. He tried to win the race to the bag himself. Just a fraction of a second too late. More ball. Third looks out of the scoreboard. He now has runners at first and third. With nobody out. Six to five. Cincy and Bittner stepping in. Here's the pitch. Low ball one. An error. Running to Jesus reach. Stretch the pitch. Swung out. They hit center field. First is going to score. The tying run to Jesus will stop at second. It's six to six in the bottom of the second inning. Victor with his 42nd run batted into the air. Lines one into center field. Bring out the pocket calculators. We may need it before the afternoon is over. Runners at first and second for Bill Buckner who in this situation in the first inning wall up his third homer of the year. The pitch, he take, gets a strike. So Murray at his first major league start will not get a win. The game is tied. And boy, boy, here's a swing and a deep drive to the right fielder, Ken Griffey. He'll get under it. The Aces tagging. He's going to third. And the throw cut off by Concepcion near the back. Runners at first and third. One away. And then Murray cannot get a win, even though he had a six to nothing lead before he threw the first pitch of the afternoon on behalf of the Cincinnati Reds. And the crowd and a beauty still coming into the ballpark. Bobby Mercer got his 15th homer of the year following Buckner's three-run shot in the first inning. And he steps in. Go-ahead run to Jesus at third. Bittner over at first base with one away. Barbone's first pitch, breaking ball for a strike. De Jesus scampers back to third. As Johnny Bench had cocked the arm... Bucky was going to fire one down to third base. There's a let up swung on. Ground ball to Morgan. Waits, gets it, throws to second. Relay. No relay. Victor went flying in to break up any thoughts that Dave Concepcion might have had about attempting a relay on a slowly hit ground ball to Morgan. The Cubs have taken the lead. Put it Bobby Mercer with his 60 second run by the end of the year. He's on at first base and a fielder's choice. That 
run charge against Borbone and Jerry Morales stepping in with two guards. Popped up to Mike Lum, the first baseman in the first inning for the first half. After a double, a walk, a three-run homer by Buckner and a solo shot by Bobby Mercer. Takes, it's a strike on the inside corner. Park Ridge, Park District. Out here congratulating the Cubs today. They got 250 boys and girls from their fine program in Park Ridge. They never expected to see this, I know. Boy, what fun it is, particularly for kids. There's a swing and a foul back out of play. And those baseballs start flying out of the ballpark, particularly those off the bats of the Cubs. They've got to love it. They remember each one of them. Barbone out in front of Morales. Next pitch, takes, just misses, a little high, ball two, strike two. Vince Lloyd and Lou Boudreaux here with you. Al Aldrich, your engineer, and Jack Minovich, our producer. Don't go away. Seven to six Cubs. Bottom of the second, each team with a half a dozen hits. The pitch swung on, foul, sharply back to the backstop, and it's two and two. Group of 51 from the Glenview Naval Air Station here today. Sidearm fastball swung on and missed for strike three. Four bones for strikeout coming on here in the second in relief. But the Cubs with three runs in the second inning. One Cincinnati error. Three base hits, including Mineral, seventh home of the year. One man left in the bases. Well, we've got two full innings in already. So far, the Cubs seven runs, six hits. The Reds six runs, six hits. Well, friends, now you can water your lawn without watering your house, your driveway, and your guests. Just go to your True Value Hardware store, get a multi-pattern lawn sprinkler that's designed to keep the water on your lawn and not on your house. Or your friends, like a Nelson Poppy three-arm sprinkler. It whirls water in a square so you can water right up to the edge of your yard without sprinkling the sidewalk or the house. True Value Hardware stores also have the Nelson Beta Impulse Sprinkler. It has more sprinkling patterns than the standard revolving models, so it gets those hard-to-reach spots without wasting water on the house. Now you can water your lawn, too, without watering your house and guests. Get Nelson's multi-pattern lawn sprinkler at participating True Value Hardware stores. Nothing like a little fun of excitement at the ball yard. Let it up already. The last a lot of fans a whole day. With a long way to go on this one. Vince Lloyd and here's Lou Boudreaux. Seven to six Cubs, and we're just starting the third inning. The Boyne, the hitter. Burris's first pitch. For Bone swings and lines a base hit over the leaping trio's head into right center. The only thing I can say about today's game, I'm very happy that we have last bats. That's going to be very important. And for the office pools with 13 and 15 runs in your pocket, hold on. One never knows. Today is a, a day for the bullpen. Foster singles to right center, and now here's Bench. Bench hit a home run, a line drive into the catwalk in left field. Foster on first. Burris into the stretch. Here's the pitch. Outside, ball one. Let's pause five seconds for station identification. This is the WGN Chicago Cubs Baseball Network. 
WGN Radio Chicago. It's 82 at Midway, 81 on the lakefront. Bench takes a strike. A sidearm curveball over the outside corner. One and one to count. Donnie Moore starts loosening up at the Cubs bullpen. Here's a toss to first base. Foster was hadn't taken his lead yet when Burris threw over to uh, Buckner. Now we're set. The pitch to bench. High curve ball taken by Johnny, and it's two and one. Six home runs have been hit in this ball game thus far. Two and one pitch. Outside. Ball three. Three and one to bench. Geronimo do up next. Foster opened up the inning, getting the seventh Cincinnati hit off Burris. Here's a three and one pitch to Johnny Bench. Swing and a miss. Three and two. Nobody out, third inning. Burris taking a little time now. On the mound. Tosses the first base and Foster once again had one foot on the bag. The pitch. Outside ball four. That moves Foster to second base. That is the first walk by Burris and Herman Franks is coming out of the uh, dugout. Franks motions to Donnie Moore. So while Donnie Moore is coming in to loosen up, let's pause for this message. Lawns come in many shapes and sizes. So do Lawn Chief Mowers from True Value Hardware Stores. They offer a complete line of gas and electric powered mowers and heavy duty lawn tractors in sizes for every type of lawn from a small city lot to a sprawling country estate. For average size lawns, they offer rotary mowers and self-propelled models with 18 to 22 inch cutting widths, plus a high wheel mower for rough bumpy areas and a rear bagger model that mows easily in narrow places. To cut big lawns down to size, you'll find Lawn Chief riding mowers and heavy duty tractors with 25 to 36 inch cutting widths, forward and reverse speeds, and many other features. True Value Hardware Stores own their Lawn Chief Mower Factory where they design and manufacture their lawn chief mowers to exacting standards with performance, convenience, and user safety in mind. So no matter what size lawn you own, you'll find a matching lawn chief mower exclusively at participating True Value Hardware Stores. Johnny Moore has a 3.55 earn run average. He's won three, lost one. This is his 20th game. He has pitched 38 innings, 37 hits, 20 runs. He's walked 13 while striking out 27. Foster opened up the inning with a single, bench walked, and now Geronimo will face Donnie Moore with the Cubs leading 7 to 6. We're in the third inning. This game is an hour old right now. Other action in the American League the Boston Red Sox came up with six runs. In the third inning, they lead Milwaukee 7 to nothing. New York, Yankees 5, Baltimore 1 at the end of 4. Let me talk about that, what I was describing yesterday, when Sparky Anderson came out and was arguing with Paul Pryor on one pitch. And then I said I misinterpreted the rules that he has to leave or the pitcher has to leave. That was the rule, but they changed that rule. Now, Anderson also thought that was the rule and would not call in his pitcher and then told Pryor that he is protesting the game. That's when Pryor went to the other two umpires. But then Harvey told Sparky Anderson that that rule had been changed, and Sparky said, yes, I had forgotten about it, so the protest was called off, and Pryor also did call in the pitcher. Sparky Anderson did not. Here's a swing, a line drive, base hit to right field. The tying run will score. 
Pusher cuts off that ball. Gets it into the relay man to hold bench to third base. So Geronimo didn't wait. The first pitch thrown to him by Moore, he doubles down the right field line. This game is all tied up 7-7. to Cincinnati has runners on second and third. Nobody out in the third inning. And now, Conception is going to bat. 35 RBIs for Geronimo. Eight hits for Cincinnati in the, a brand new ball game. Seven to seven. Donnie Moore gets his side. Cub infield, the right side, halfway. Swing a line drive, base hit over Trio's head. Two more runs will score. It's now 9-7 to seven, Cincinnati as Concepcion drives in his 35th and 36th RBI of the season. One of those runs charged to Moore. So Burris in two complete innings and two men in the third allowed eight runs, seven hits. Struck out two and walked one. Moore has faced two men. He's allowed a double and a single. Now here's Lum at bat. Hit a two-run home run in the first inning. Paul Russell now starts warming up for the Cubs. Concepcion with a tremendous lead at first base and Moore sees that and tosses over that to first to hold him close to the bag. Concepcion on has 21 stolen bases. The stretch and the pitch. Swing a ground ball at Trio's left. Gloves it. Turns. Fires to DeJesus to force Concepcion at second base. One out. Verbone will be the hitter. Bourbon has four for 13. Lead has changed hands again. Cincinnati leading six nothing at the end of one. Should be six to four, I should say. Cubs taking the lead seven to six at the end of two. And now, in the top of the third, Cincinnati has regained the lead. Bourbon was going to bunt, but takes a strike outside. Corner, strike one. Antaveras in at third, expecting the sacrifice. There's the bunt, but it's foul down the first baseline. One out here in the third inning. Lum on first base. Moore in relief of Burris. Into the stretch. Here's the pitch. The bunt down the first base line. And he is out. He was hit by the ball. So the runner at second will have to return to first base. And Sparky's going to argue. The ball came up and hit the batter. So he's out for interference. And Lum has to return to first base. Anderson asking Olsen, plate umpire, to describe it. He does. Lum returns the first, and now with two outs, and credit Muggerwall, I guess, with the putout. He was the closest one to the batter. And here's Pete Rose. So a little of everything today at Wrigley Field. The long ball... Texas Leaguers, Ayers. And now an interference. Two outs, Rose the hitter. Here's the 
They give the out to three. They give the out to Buckner. Swing and a miss by Rose on the first pitch. Moore is ready. Throws to first. Lum gets back safely. Cincinnati with nine runs, nine hits. Cubs, seven runs, six hits. Swing and a miss on a good fastball outside. Two strikes on Rose. Two outs. Cincinnati, nine. Cubs, seven. The pitch. Inside fastball ball, one strike two. Bittner and left today. Morales in center, Mercer in right. Here's the one and two pitch to Rose. Low. Just below his knee. Ball two, strike two. Rose and home run and a ground out. The pitch on its way. Swing and a tap foul. Two and two to count. Both starting pitchers in the clubhouse. Here's the two and two pitch. Instead, he throws the first, and Lum gets back safely. Now Moore is ready. He sets, throws the first again, and Lum gets back safely. Rose in that crouch at the plate. Here's the pitch. Low ball three. Three and two on Pete Rose. Youngster was hit by a foul ball off Pete Rose's bat yesterday. There goes a runner. Here's a swing. A base hit through the middle of the diamond into center field. And Lum will go to third as Morales gets that ball in quickly. As I was mentioning, Rose fouled the ball down the left field line yesterday and it hit a youngster in the cheek, right adjacent to the nose, and the youngster had a bloody nose and a severe, painfully swollen cheek, loosened teeth. And today, Pete Rose signed the baseball for that youngster. The name of, I believe, Paul Franks, in Skokie, Illinois. And I have it in my possession. And we'll get it over to young Franks as soon as possible. Rose felt very badly about it, but could do nothing about it, of course. Swing a line drive base hit to center field by Griffey. Boy, let me tell you, those base hits look like they're coming out of cannons at the plate. Griffey drives in a run. Lum scores. The fourth one of the inning, it's now 10-7 to in favor of Cincinnati. And it doesn't look like rain. Rose stops at second. Buckner in on the mound talking to Moore. Rose is on second. Griffey is on first. The Reds have batted around here in the third inning. They have scored four runs on five hits in the inning. Morgan, the hitter, he has one for two. The pitch, swing and a line drive into the bullpen. Oh, they scattered down there in that bullpen. Strike one. Everyone in the Cincinnati lineup except Bourbon has at least one base hit. Low curveball, one and one to count. Ten to seven, Cincinnati. Moore in relief into the stretch. 
Here's the pitch to Morgan. Fastball swing, a ground ball. It's foul. Down the first base line. Got past Buckner, but just foul. A line drive over that bag, such as happened last night at Comiskey Park, is where the ball is unless it's touched by the infielder. And last night, Rodriguez crossed the foul line to touch a line drive, and the ball rebounded into third territory. But it was a foul ball. Here's a pop-up over Trio's head behind second. He's under it, backs up. He has it. Three outs. But the Reds send... Nine men to the plate, scoring four times. Five hits. Two men left on bases. So, at the end of two and a half innings of play, at Cincinnati 10, Cubs 7. Things can be beautiful when beautiful furniture is to be had and you've got the money in the bank. But even if the furniture is there when the cash isn't, there's still an easy way to furnish your home or apartment. Just call friendly Bob Adams of General Finance Corporation at Andover 32020. You'll be talking to personal professionals who understand how a person can occasionally run short, especially these days. At General Finance, you're always treated courteously. If you have an existing balance at General Finance, feel free to extend it. Once a General Finance customer, always a friend. And if you're a woman, remember... Friendly Bob believes that individual loans for individuals and your signature is the only one required. So enjoy beautiful new furniture in your home. Whatever your money problem, call Friendly Bob Adams to borrow up to $10,000 at Andover 32020. That's Friendly Bob Adams of General Finance at Andover 32020. There are over 65 offices in the Chicagoland area. General Finance also has an office in Mundelein. He just made an announcement in the press box that that hit by Pete Rose was his 2,884th hit. And he's 20th now on the all-career list of the base hits. Zach Wheat. He's supplanted Zach Wheat, 20th. And he leads career base hits for switch hitters. Tavares fouls off the first pitch, strike one. Cincinnati 10, Cubs 7. Here's a swing and a pop-up down the left field line. Rose after it. The ball is carrying out of play as it hits the first, in the first row. Pete grabs that ball, hands it back, tosses it back into the stand. We have 17 runs in this ball game by both clubs, 17 hits. 11 by Cincinnati, 6 hits by the Cubs. Here's a swing and a miss. Antaveras couldn't hold back. He strikes out. Manny Trio, who grounded out the first time at bat. First pitch. Outside, ball one. Here's a ball outside and low. Instead of that ball hitting Bourbone, it was explained by a plate umpire Olsen that he, number one, he crossed over the plate to bunt it, and number two, he's running inside the baseline. So the catcher gets the put out. Ball two, strike one. To trio. Here's the pitch. Inside. Ball three, strike one. Three and one pitch on its way. Inside, ball four. 
Now here's Minnewall, who hit a tremendous home run his first time at bat. Trio on first. Minnewall steps in the batter's box. Paul Russell is ready. He was warming up at the top of the inning. Curveball, swing a line drive right to Rose. Go to first, not in time. Minnewall lined that ball right to Pete Rose at third base for the second out in the inning. Johnny Moore is going to hit for himself. We're in the third inning with Cincinnati leading 10 to 7. Six home runs have been hit thus far in this ball game. First pitch is the ball outside to Dowdy. That's left-handed, even though he fires right hand. Here's one swing off. Deep to center field, way back. Off the wall. Here comes Trio around third. He's going to score. Here's Johnny Moore going into third with a triple. Johnny Moore triples off of the wall in center field, driving in Trio. Now the score is 10 to 8. Moore is on third, and De Jesus the hitter. For Moore, that's his second hit, first triple of the year, first RBI of the year. That ball didn't lack from going onto the AstroTurf by very much, about three feet, four feet. Now here's De Jesus. Two outs. Big run if we could pick it up from third base. Curve ball for a strike taken by De Jesus. The pitch, curveball, tap, foul. Into the Cubs dugout. 0-2 on to Hesu. He doubled in the first inning. Safe on Lum's air in the second. Warbone. Well, Into the windup. Here's the pitch. Outside, ball one. This is perhaps one of the earliest that Bourbon has ever entered a ball game in relief. Entered it in the second inning. The pitch. Swing and a miss. He fouled it right into the glove of Bench. In the third inning, the Cubs pick up one run. One hit. One man left on base. At the end of three complete innings of play, Cincinnati 10, Cubs 8. Say, if you ever come across a 1909 Chalmers Tour about, a 1910 Owen, or 1915 Nevada truck, let Mr. Hera of Reno, Nevada know about it. He needs those three models to complete his collection of vintage cars. Even without them, the Guinness Book of World Records says Hera's 1,700 autos are worth four million bucks, and that makes it the greatest automobile collection of all time. <laughs> There's another great collection of cars right here in Libertyville, Illinois. It's Wild's collection of brand-new six-cylinder Oldsmobiles. Choose from 150 gas-saving six-cylinder Starfires, Omegas, Cutlasses, and 88s. They're equipped in every way imaginable. Some of these sixes have nothing but the bare necessities, and some have everything from full power to stereo. In other words, you're sure to find a six-cylinder Oldsmobile equipped just the way you want it at the world's largest Oldsmobile dealer, Wild Olds in Libertyville. You'll save when you buy it, save when you drive it. So come out and see Wild Six Cylinder Collection today. Top of the fourth inning for Cincinnati. Foster will lead off, and he led off the third inning by singling in the right center. And when the inning had closed out, the Reds had batted around and scored four runs. If you like a wild scoring game, with a lot of hits, a lot of running, this is it.
Now Foster steps in the batter's box. Moore on the mound. In it is wind up. Foster stepped out of the batter's box for just a moment. Now we're set. Here's the first pitch. Fastball, a swing, and a line drive. Base hit into left field. They're picking on Moore's first pitch. Foster now has two for three in this ball game. That is the 12th hit for Cincinnati. Here's Bench. Three-run home run in the first inning. Walk in the third. Cincinnati with six in the first. They rested in the second. Came back with four in the third. First pitch to Johnny Bench. Low, ball one. The Cubs scored four in the first, three in the second, and one in the third. We haven't batted yet in the fourth. The ball one pitch. There's a ball low outside. Ball two, no strikes to Johnny Bench. Foster on first base, nobody out. Moore into the stretch. The pitch. Low ball three. Ball three and no strikes to Johnny Bench. And this is the kind of day that they may give Johnny the green light on this pitch. There's the ball getting away from the Cubs' bullpen as Russell starts warming up again. Ben steps back into the uh, batter's box. The 3 and 0 pitch on its way. Strike called right down the middle, and he was taking. 3 and 1 now the count. Four sets, checks the runner, the pitch. Fastball high above his head, ball four. Now time is called. Herman Franks walking out from the dugout once again to the mound. Looks around at Paul Russell to see if he's ready. He is, so Russell's coming in, so let's pause for just a moment for this message. Some people only sell paint. True Value Hardware stores make it. And who knows more about paint than the manufacturer? True Test Paint from True Value Hardware stores has become one of the nation's best-known, fastest-growing brands. True Test Paint like Weatherall acrylic latex house paint. It applies like a latex, wears like an oil base and protects your home from all kinds of weather. And True Test Easy Care Latex Flat Enamel with a hard enamel finish. Most stains just wash away so you don't have to repaint so often. And yet it still has that soft look that complements any room in your home. And Easy Care has earned the good housekeeping seal. Easy Care and Weatherall are among the many True Test paints made in True Value Hardware Store's own factories. And they are among the most efficient and modern paint factories in the paint industry. So when you want quality and real paint know-how, go to the paint maker. You're participating True Value Hardware Store because True Value is more than just a name. It's their way of doing business. Paul Russell coming in here. See if he can stop these reds. Paul Russell has a 2.61 earner on average. He has a record of 4-2. and two. This is his 39th game. He's pitched 62 and one-third innings. Allowed 53 hits. 20 runs. 23 walks, 5 intentional. He has struck out 34. He's allowed 6 home runs. He's going to face 
Geronimo here with runners on first and second. Nobody out. Fourth inning. First pitch on its way. Swing and a double play ball at Trio. He goes to DeJesus. DeJesus throw to first. A double play. So the Cubs get their 84th double play on the first pitch thrown to Geronimo by Russell. That moves Foster to third, but now there are two outs. Let's pause five seconds for station identification. This is the WGN Chicago Cubs Baseball Network. This is WGN Radio Chicago, one minute until three. First pitch to Concepcion. Ball one. And they want to look at that pit, at that ball, I should say. Olson gives Paul Russell. The baseball. Tough job for the managers today to pick out a man who can stop the opposition. The pitch. Inside, ball two. Foster on third base with two outs. Paul Russell, third cup pitcher. Into the wind up the pitch. Inside, ball three. Concepcion looks down to his coach. Schubert gets a sign. Lum is due up next. Three and zero pitch is a strike call. Three and one now. Two outs. Cincinnati leads ten to eight. The pitch by Russell. Pop foul over the Reds dugout. Three and two now on Concepcion. Here's a three and two pitch. Swing and a ground ball to DeJesus right. He has it. The long throw. In time. A beautiful play by DeJesus. Throwing out Concepcion. Saving that run. So Paul Russell came in and did an outstanding job in retiring the Reds after they had runners on first and second and nobody out. In the fourth inning, no runs, one hit. One man left on base. Cubs coming to bat fourth inning. Cincinnati 10, Cubs 8. Fans of summer, True Value Hardware Stores can show you how to wipe out armies of bugs single-handedly with a Hudson cordless sprayer. Takes just a single hand to hold and operate the lightweight Hudson half-gallon cordless sprayer. Its Minimax nozzle adjusts for fine, coarse, or long-range spray and adjusts to reach the underside of leaves. The extension helps you reach high branches or into the center of thick shrubbery. And the Hudson cordless sprayer from True Value Hardware Stores sprays its half-gallon capacity three times on a single overnight charge. Now, this summer, you can wipe out armies of bugs single-handedly. Get the Hudson half-gallon cordless sprayer from participating True Value Hardware Stores. True Value Hardware is more than just a name. In the fourth inning, the Cubs will send Bittner, Buckner, and Mercer to the plate, trailing by two runs. It's ten to eight. Well, we have a group of special school-aged children totaling 80 here with their chaperones. They represent the South Metropolitan Association of for Low Incidence Handicap, the regional public school program serving 55 school districts in the southern suburbs. These children enjoying today's ball game. Well, they perhaps is not, are not enjoying the score right now, but they're enjoying the action. Burbone's first pitch to Bittner is a strike call. The 
It'll be Bittner, Buckner, and Mercer. Cubs trail by two. Here's a foul ball off the bat of Bittner. He didn't want to swing. The ball hit the bat, goes foul, strike two. New York Yankees now lead Baltimore 7-1 to one at the end of five and a half. Boston leads Milwaukee 8 to nothing at the end of six. Swing and a base hit. Half Morgan in the right field. I had to hold up for a minute. I didn't know whether Morgan was going to catch up to that ball or not. So Bittner gets his second hit of the day. And now here's Buckner at bat. He represents the tying run. Hit a three-run home run in the first. A wild affair here at Wrigley Field. Cincinnati 10, Cubs 8. We're in the fourth inning. This game is an hour and a half old already. The dinner will be late tonight. The stretch, the pitch, curve ball outside, ball one. Bourbon, the second Cincinnati red pitcher. Cubs have used three thus far. Lum playing behind Bittner. There's a strike called, and it's one and one on Buckner. Bourbon is ready. Here's a pitch, a swing, and a fly ball deep to left center. But the center fielder, Geronimo, back on the warning track, catches that ball for the out. Buckner just couldn't get around on Bourbon's fastball. Mercer, the batter. A home run to the opposite field in the first inning. Bidner on first. One out now. Here's the first pitch to Mercer. Swing and a miss on a low sinker. Strike one. Barbone gets a sign from bench. Checks Bittner at first. The pitch. Swing and a base hit in the left center. There goes Bittner around second. And he will hold up as Geronimo got in very fast to feel that ball. And Bittner wasn't going to take any chances two runs down. So he stopped at second base. So Mercer gets his second hit of the day. That's the fourth hit off Barbone. And now here's Morales at bat with Cub runners. First and second, one out. Cincinnati with ten runs, twelve hits. The Cubs have eight runs on nine hits. First pitch to Morales. Swing and a miss, strike one. Barbone. Waiting until Morales gets set. Now the pitch. Swing and a miss on a sidearm curveball breaking away. From Jerry, it's 0-2. The pitch on its way. Curveball outside. Just missing it. It's one ball, two strikes. On Tavares, two up next. Tying run for the Cubs at first base. In the person of Mercer, Bittner is on second. Here's the pitch to Jerry Morales. Outside, ball two. Two and two to count. Ball two, strike two. Bourbon checks the base runners. Bittner at second base. Mercer is on first. Here's the pitch. High ball three. Ball three, strike two to Jerry Morales. Bittner takes his lead from second. 
Here's a pitch. Swing and a line drive. Right field. Right fielder Griffey going back on the warning track. Reaches up and makes a one-handed catch. Bittner goes back to tag up and reaches third safely. Another line drive that was hit deep in the right field. Griffey makes the catch for the out. Two outs. It's going to be up to Antaveras. He has struck out twice. Bittner now is on third. Mercer on his, is on first. First pitch, Dr. Barris. Swing and a pop up behind second. This could be tough. Rose is there. Step down is there. The ball drops for a base hit. And Mercer goes to third. There was a tough play. Rose trying to make an over-the-shoulder catch. Running from the infield. Could not make the catch. Concepcion was playing on Tavares, the left-handed hitter, over towards second base, so he couldn't get there in time. And the ball went off of Rose's glove, lands in third territory by two feet. So it's a base hit for on Tavares. Scores Bittner with a Cubs ninth run. Sends Mercer to third with a tying run. And here's Trio at bat. First pitch, swing and a line drive, base hit to left center. There goes Antaveras to third as Mercer scores the tying run. A brand new ball game. The Cubs have fought back from a six to nothing deficit and have tied up the Cincinnati Reds. 10 to 10. And we're only in the fourth inning. This could be an 18 to 17 game, you know. Here's Minnewall. Home run in the second inning, lined out in the third. The pitch, strike call. Tavares on third, Trio on first. The pitch. Fly ball to center field. Geronimo is there. Flips the glasses down. He has it one-handed for the out. But the Cubs have fought back. They scored two runs, four hits, two men left on the bases. At the end of four, it's ten to ten. Have you ever turned off the ignition on your car, but the engine keeps running and running and the body shakes and vibrates? That's called run-on, and it's caused by post-ignition inside the cylinders. When your car keeps running on like this, it's a sign it may need higher octane to perform the way it should. Now Standard introduces new Amoco Premium Lead Free, the higher octane lead-free gasoline with higher octane than typical unleaded gasoline. Higher octane than regular leaded gasolines, too. Try a tank full. It could make a difference. If you don't have the problem of engine run-on, use lead-free Amoco, the Midwest's best-selling lead-free. Standard is the lead-free leader. And now Standard offers you two lead-free gasolines. New Amoco premium lead-free in the gold pump and famous lead-free Amoco in the blue pump. You'll find this choice of lead-free gasolines at your independent Standard Oil dealer. Because you expect more from a leader. Well, it's settling down. After ten runs in the first inning, in the next three, there have only been ten. you still got plenty of time to come out and see a lot of action at Wrigley Field today. Let me tell you, this is the kind of a game that the kids particularly just have to fall in love with. Man, oh man, they'll be talking about this one for the next month. And probably right on into the school days. They never forget this kind. And I guarantee you they'll remember every Cub home run. Mike Lum, who homered in the first inning with a man on, reached in a fielder's choice in the third, is going to lead off against the Cubs' Paul Russell. While they have tied 
a home run by both ball clubs in one inning with five. They are nowhere near the major league record for homers in a game by two teams. That record is 11. First pitch of the ball to the left-handed hitting Lum. Ball on the windup. Fast ball just misses outside. Ball two. Everybody except the pitchers on the Reds have at least one hit. And four of them have two hits. There's a strike. Ball two, strike one. Pete Rose is a pair, including a homer. Griffey has a pair of singles. George Foster is a pair of singles. Here's the pitch swung out, a drive into center field, and Mike Love now has his second hit of the day. Single into center field. Dave Concepcion has a pair of singles. And Pedro Borbon loves to swing that bat stepping in. Four for 13 for Borbon this year. Olivares, anticipating a sacrifice, comes up the line for a bone. Pushes one out to the mound. Russell has it. Goes to second for one. The relay. Double play. Russell to the Jesus. The Manny Trio. Despite Lums going in hard. Trying to take the Jesus out. He couldn't do it. And credit Paul Russell with a fine play. Gloving the ball just on the first base side in front of the mound. Leaving to DeJesus, absorbed the impact of the runner sliding in, threw a little high, but Benny Trio, fortunately, is fairly tall and a long reach, got it in a boarding house. So the bases are empty with the Cubs, 85th double play of the year. And Pete Rose steps in. He triggered the fireworks, leading off the ball game with a homer off Ray Burris. Pitcher trying to sacrifice and bunts into a double play. He takes and airs a strike. He wants Andy Olson, the plate up to inspect the ball. He does, keeps it in play. All of the windup. Sinkers into the dirt. Ball one, strike one. Cubs six in the first, four in the third. Or the Reds, rather. Six in the first and four in the third. A foul ball out of play to the left side. Faced a good fastball. Well, the Cubs responded with four runs in the first inning, three in the second, one in the third, and two in the fourth. And only 20 runs have been scored so far on 24 base hits. But it's early. We're only in the fifth inning. Pete steps out of the batter's box. He is now 20th in the all-time list of Major League hitters with total base hits of 2,884. I'm sorry, he has tied Zach Wheat for that total. 2,884. Hello, all that gone out to talk to Paul. Now George steps back. He has one of the home runs today. They wall up three in the first inning. One-two delivery. Swung on. Bouncing ball. Trio to his right. Comes up for him. He's got it. Throws to first. Got him to retire the side. That ball really jumped up in the last top about head high. He throws. Grounds out to Trio for the second time. End of the fifth inning. No runs. One hit. Reds leave nobody on. And the Cubs come to bat in the bottom of the fifth inning. Paul Russell is to lead off with a score still. Since he 10, the Cubs 10. You know there's one kind of ball player a manager really likes to have around, and that's the guy who's consistent? He's there every day making the plays and getting the hits. Well, that's the kind of consistency you get with Heilman's Old Style Beer. You always know you're going to get the same flavor from bottle to bottle, can to can, and case in and case out. The reason... Well, the folks at G. Highland Brewing Company are consistently fussy about what goes into this great light beer. They select only the choicest hops, the finest grains, 
and they believe only sparkling, pure Wisconsin spring water is good enough for old style. Water that flows from deep beneath the ground. Some folks say all the way from Canada. And when it comes to brewing, they still brew old style the old world way. In fact, old style is one American premium beer that is still fully croisoned, naturally carbonated in the old world way, which means it's pure brewed, double brewed. So next time, try the beer that tastes great consistently. Try Old Style, pure brewed in God's country. Paul Russell to lead off. The other two cup pitchers have preceded him today. Got base hits. Burris, a double and scored. Donnie Moore, tripled in Romanorot. Don't be embarrassed, Paul. Get a hit. First pitch to him is a strike. Then the 10 score, Bourbon delivers. Sidearm, breaking ball, and he tried to hold up and couldn't do it. It's a strike. Nothing in two. Bourbon will come at you about 10 different ways. Sidearm, three-quarter, overhand, change of speeds. With a lot of breaking pitches and has a good fastball. There's a fastball swung on and missed. Throws it almost like a good softball pitcher that time. Paul has spanned that strikeout number four for Pedro. His third victim, Ivan De Jesus, stepping in. Doubled and scored on Buckner's three run homer in the first. Reached on an air. First man to face Bourbon when he came on in the second inning and he scored on Bittner's single. As a swing and a high fly ball to the center fielder, Geronimo. He's under it. Reaches up. Gloves at one ended, and they're two away. Here's Buckner, or Bittner, rather, who has walked and has a pair of singles today and a run batted in and a run scored. Jim Dorr, John Murphy, Kim Dorr, Mike Dorr drove 200 miles, didn't mind at all because they wanted to see the Cubs start a 10-game winning streak. Wouldn't that be nice from Iowa? And uh, 117 fans from the campus Illinois Lions are here with their guests. Their fifth annual trip to Wrigley Field. Bittner takes the first pitch of strike. Warbone and Paul Russell now working against one another in relief. Here's the windup. Takes the strike over the outside corner. Larry not too pleased with that call. John Tupo, the good cup fans, and the car leader. These days, maybe uh, here's a swing and a bouncing foul. He's out here today. He's got a grip of uh, Glendale Heights fans with him this afternoon. Our good friend John Loftus, helping to see that John Tupo doesn't get lost at Wrigley Field. As a strike called, and Bittner can't believe it. He draws a line about three inches away from the plate to indicate to Andy Olson, in his judgment, the pitch was outside. But only the judgment of Andy Olson counts. And Bourbon, with two strikeouts in the fifth inning, puts the Cubs down in order. That's the first inning. The Cubs have been shut out. So, at the end of five at Wrigley Field, game settling down a little bit. Reds 10, the Cubs 10. True Value Hardware Stores want to help you save on energy, so they offer savings on the batteries you need to supply energy to flashlights, kids' toys, games, and more. Right now, you can get a pack of four Rayovac C or D size batteries for just 77 cents. These Rayovac general purpose batteries are ideal for equipment that's only used occasionally or for short periods of time. And now the True Value Hardware Stores are offering a four-pack of these Rayovac batteries for just 77 cents. You can afford to replace all your worn-out batteries and stock up on extras for future use. Get a pack of four Rayovac C or D size general purpose batteries for just 77 cents from participating True Value Hardware Stores. Way 
now the groundskeeping crew has uh, raked over the infield. Let me tell you, it needed it because it's been torn up pretty good with all those spikes that have been uh, racing around here this afternoon. We've got a crowd, I would judge, about 32, 33,000. Maybe a little bit more. Ken Griffey, with two hits today, stepping in. When all is said and done, the Cubs will still be number one. No, Bill Berg did not make that up. Two little kids parading that one around here today. First pitch of ball. Griffey takes. There's a strike, a slider on him. Ball one, strike one. Phillies did not score at Los Angeles in the top of the first inning. Go get him, Dodgers. Wind up in the 1-1 pitch. Griffey swings and he misses. Ball must have got a piece of it, and I think it came off the bare hand of Merrill as it dropped right at his feet. Didn't want to show that he's hurt at all. All right, Bill, we're going to put you in the pool. What would you guess would be the total run scored here at Wrigley Field today, Mr. Burt? Total runs. We've got 20 now. Um, I'll say 28 runs, Vince. Look out. There's one high and deep. It is now up to 21. That is gone. Way, way back. That one left the ballpark. Let me tell you, where that left the park, it has to be at least 430 feet away. You know, this is beginning to look like a reenactment of Star Wars. Everything is exploding around this place. It's unreal. Good Lord. What a shot. Griffey's ninth home run of the year. That's only his third hit today. That one may be in the lake. Here's Morgan. Checks his swing and fouls it out of play into the box seats on the third base side. It is now 11 to 10, with the Reds having the 11. Balls, next pitch, a slow curve for strike call. There have been some shots here, to, here today. Didn't need any win for some of them. Fastball swung on there as a base hit in the right center field. He may try to stretch it. Mercer coming over to cut it off. Here's Morgan going into second. Here's a throw. Off target, and he's in there with a double. Throw kept veering over towards first base. That was about 15 feet off the bag at second. Morgan had made up his mind as soon as he left the batter's box. He was going to try it for two, and he got it. That's only his 14th double this year. Thought he had more than that. And that's Joe's second hit of the day. George Foster, the leading home run hitter in the majors with 32, has two singles and a strikeout so far today. Runner at second, curve, checks his swing, it's low, ball one. They ask for the appeal, denied. Willie Hernandez, appeared in both games of the doubleheader yesterday, and the southpaw is now throwing in the cup bullpen down the left field line. 11 to 10, since he's leading. Balls, fastball swung up. Bouncing ball down to Barris. Runner gets back to second to throw to first. He's got it. Out of Barris having to angle in towards the bound and in front of the shortstop position. And Morgan hastily got back into the bag at second. One gone in the top of the sixth inning, and here's Johnny Bench. Just prior to his three-run homer in the first inning, he just missed building one of Ray Burris's shots out of here. It went foul. He made up for it. The next one was really hammered. His 23rd homer of the year. Since then, he's walked twice and scored once. Takes the first pitch high, ball one. The Dodgers did not score in the bottom of the first inning. No score at the end of one. The Phillies and L.A. in a day game. The most unusual thing during the week at Los Angeles. 1-0 pitch. Good sinker. Fastball. Foul. Caroms off the wall. Back on the line of the plate in first. What did you say the score was going to be, Bill? I'll go with the total of 28 runs. 28. Yeah. Okay. That means somebody's got to win by at least two. 
Yeah. One one six. Well, now there's a deep drive, but it's going to stay in the ballpark, and Fittner will catch it. He does. Thanks, Evan. This, I'll tell you, the funniest, not game, but games I ever saw. When I was a kid and living in Buffalo for a while, I used to go to International League games. And I saw a doubleheader between Buffalo and Syracuse, 28-11 to 11 and 16-12. to 12. <laughs> There Double were 10 header. home runs in the first yeah. game. Yeah, they set International League records all over the place. <laughs> this is shaping up as the same yeah, kind yeah, of thing. Yeah. Geronimo stepping in. Morgan still at second with two gone. Fastball tails outside to the left-hander. Ball one. John Tufo, what's your guess of the total run? 27 runs. 27. The Cubs with 14, huh? All right. John Loftus, what's yours? <laughs> There's a swing, deep drive. Left field, but they're going back. Go back. Get there, Larry. Look out! Oh, man! What an acrobatic job by Larry Pittner as that ball really was hammered. And he really added to a tremendous job of recovery. He made that a heart-stopping catch. Started to drift back. Ball still carried. Finally, at the last moment of the warning track, he leaps up and back towards the wall. Barely got it in the webbing of the glove. Somehow... As he came down, righted himself, went up against the vines, and still managed to hold out of the ball. Thank you, Larry. That's our thrill for the day. That's Geronimo. And the Reds are retired in the sixth inning. A leadoff homer by Griffey. Doubles by Bargain, who's left stranded. Now we move to the Cub half of inning number six, and don't go away. Cincinnati leading 11 to 10. Chances are you may have different monthly bills for different amounts due at different times, so you might appreciate a timely suggestion on handling the payments. Consider combining all your monthly bills into a single, convenient monthly payment with a consolidation loan from friendly Bob Adams at General Finance Corporation. Besides reducing your debts, a General Finance bill consolidation loan makes bill paying more convenient, easier to keep track of. Call friendly Bob Adams at Andover 32020 where there's someone willing to listen and willing to help. Even while your phoning action begins on your own personal general finance consolidation loan, it lets you reduce a month's collection of scattered bills to one convenient monthly payment. Bill paying is simplified and organized. You may even save money over the long run. So whatever your financial problems, call friendly Bob at Andover 32020. That's Andover 32020 for a general finance bill consolidation loan up to $10,000. There are over 65 offices in the Chicagoland area. They also have an office in Naperville. General Finance, I hope you'll give them a call. In answer to your question, a heart-stopping uh, minute or two ago, John Loftus, the prize, we're going to give you Jack Brickhouse. <laughs> now, what's your guess on the total runs for the day? We got to get a good pool going up here. Four bones delivery. Buckner swings, gets under it, lets a high fly ball to the right fielder, Griffey. Just missed hitting one out of here. But uh, wind started to carry it, and Griffey had to make a good recovery to grab that one one-handed. Bobby Mercer, the batter, has a homer and a single. Two runs batted in today. Pause a moment here for station identification. This is the WGN Chicago Cubs Baseball Network. WGN Radio Chicago 331. Four ball delivers. Bobby Mercer takes the ball. Too low, ball one. Vince Lloyd here with you at Wrigley Field. Let's see, 21 runs right now. I think I'm going to guess 25 total for the day. That's not very many, is it? Bobby takes. There's a strike to level the count at one and one on him. Got his 15th homer of the year in the first inning. Here's a pitch. Gets under the fastball and fouls it back up onto the screen. Got a group from Beaverville, Illinois. Here to cheer the Cubs on to a pennant. Lloyd Yates, Mort Regner, Phoenix Arsenault, and Danny Yates. 
Beaverville, Illinois. Where in the world is that? I think somebody's putting me on. Well, about on the windup. Mercer swings and he misses for strike three. He shakes his head in disbelief. One after one, letter high away. For a bone, six strike out of the ball game. No need to hurry back, Bill. We may be here for a long time. You may not get on the air today. <laughs> Jerry Morales, believe it or not, is the only Cub in the starting lineup today who does not yet have a hit. And he's the leading hitter on the club. I find that a little ironic. Takes the first pitch of strike. He's popped up, fanned, and hammered a drive to the right fielder. Hit it hard. But he's 0 for 3. 0 1 pitch. There's a high fly ball coming in for his trip. He's going to get there. Nope. Jerry Morales gets his first hit of the day. A Texas leaguer in front of Ken Griffey. That would have been embarrassing, you know, with all these base hits. That's the 12th by the Cubs. For little Jerry not to have one of them. Hit number seven of Pedro Borbon. Brings up out of air, so after striking out his first two times up, singled and drove in a run in the fourth inning. The Reds lead 11 to 10. Takes the first pitch of strike. The Cubs with two homers in the first inning, Buckner with two men on, followed by Mercer's shot. Menowal led off the second with a homer. There's the ball, missing away at the knees. The Cubs with three home runs. The Reds got three in the first inning. Rose to lead off the game. Bench with two men on. Mike Lum with a man on. And Griffey led off the six with a homer. So they have four. And the total of seven. There's a strike. The total of seven homers by these two clubs today is four away from the high by two teams in a game in the majors. Well, Bond with a one-two pitch. Checks his swing, and it's low and inside. Two and two. The Cardinals of Chabona Park's Kenny Hubs League for nine and ten-year-olds are here today. Twenty strong. Two-two pitch. Outside, he wouldn't chase it. Three and two, and the runner of Morales will be off with this pitch. Kenny Hubs, of course, the great young uh, second baseman for the Cubs who was killed in the off-season private plane crash. 3-2 pitch. High for ball four and four ball. Upset with himself. Flying run, Morales at second base. Out of Harris on at first represents the go-ahead run and Manny Trio, the hitter. Manny grounded out in the first, walked and scored in the third, singled and drove in a run in the fourth. The stretch, the pitch, swung on, a miss. Good fastball in on Kenny Up League is part of that Shabona Park Youth Council total baseball program that has in excess of 600 players. In the box seats in back of the Cup dugout with the red Cardinal jerseys on. There's a swing and a lazy little fly ball that Ken Griffey comes in for. He's got it easily. The Cubs are retired in the sixth. No runs, one hit, two men left. At Wrigley Field, at the end of six full innings of play, Cincinnati Reds, 11, the Chicago Cubs, 10. January 27, 1976. Steve Markoff hands over a check for $7,300,000. In return, he receives the most valuable coin collection of all time. It consists of 407,000 silver dollars. The Guinness Book of World Records says that transaction took place in Reno, Nevada. There's also a great collection for sale right here in Libertyville, Illinois. It's Weil Oldsmobile's collection of 1977 Oldsmobiles. Weil has over 500 new cars for you to choose from. You'll find Cutlasses, 88 Royales, 98 Regencies, Toronados, and over 70 station wagons. Weil's got them all, all styles, all colors, all kinds of equipment, all ready for immediate delivery. So drive home the Oldsmobile of your dreams. You know, just the way you've envisioned it. Model, color, equipment, everything just the way you want it, including a low, low price. Visit the world's largest Oldsmobile dealer, Weil, in Libertyville. Dave can 
Concepcion is to lead off here for the Cincinnati Reds. Wild, woolly affair. Mr. and Mrs. Gaylord, McKee and family of Warren, Illinois, wishing Colleen McKee a speedy recovery. She's in the hospital where I'm happy to uh, learn up at Monroe, Wisconsin. Colleen and Abbott come fan. First pitch, and Concepcion takes the ball that misses outside at the knees to the right-hander. Wind up by ball. There's one that just misses a little low. Ball two. The Phillies and the Dodgers are in the third. Still no score in the West Coast. Ball steps back to widen up the pitch. Concepcion takes a strike, a good fastball. Davey with two hits, a pair of singles. He's batted in two runs today. He was hitless in the series up until this afternoon. There's the ball to flown away. Ball three, strike one on the red shortstop Dave Concepcion. Ball in the windup. 3-1 pitch, fastball, misses low. Ball four, he lost it. That opens up the seventh. First walk issued by Paul, who came on a relief in the fourth inning. With two on, nobody out. Got a double play ball and then a ground out off the bat of Concepcion. And a good play by DeJesus to retire the side. Yielded a single, then a double play ball on a sacrifice attempt by the pitcher in the fifth. Gave up a homer in the sixth inning to Ken Griffey. Followed by a double, then got the next three men. A couple of them were hard outs. First pitch. Lum gets under it, fouls it back out of play. Mike, a two-run homer in the first inning, his second homer of the year, has reached and scored on a fielder's choice in single. Strike one count on the left-hander. Stan Mertz, Jay Davis from Fort Worth, Illinois, took the day off to watch the Cubs and the Reds go at it today. A wild one, 11 to 10, since he. Seventh inning, the pitch. Pitch out. Runner not going. Ball one, strike one. Gang from the Sibley Pharmacy. Pushing the Cubs the very best. Hoping they can hold on to the number one spot in the Eastern Division. Throw to first. The runner back safely. One pitch coming up to Lum, and he calls for time and steps out. Got a speck of dust in his eye. One of the great engineers at WGN, Art Avery, going to be having a retirement very shortly. And unfortunately, neither Lou nor I are going to be able to be on hand for the retirement party that they're going to throw for Mr. Avery tomorrow afternoon. By that time, we expect to be down in Houston with the Chicago Cubs for the start of our series. One more pitch, the runner goes, a pitch outside, the throw is high, Rio comes down and almost spiked Concepcion going in, he may have come down a little bit on his left leg, but he's in there with a stolen base. Davey's been sitting down, now gets up kind of slowly, just something through, like, what are you trying to do that to me for? Smiles when he says it. That's his 22nd stolen base of the year, and thrown down, out just five times. So they've got a runner in scoring position with a count of two and one. Two one pitch. Got the fastball off the end of the bat and fouled it out of play. Two and two. Be a lot of ice cream. Wow. Honor, of Mr. Art Avery. One of the great ones. Two pitch. Hits under, let up, and he hits a deep foul way down the right field side into the box seats. It's still two and two. Dodgers in Philadelphia have not been able to score yet today. They're in the fourth on the West Coast. Day game during the week at Dodgers Stadium is almost as rare as snow in July in Chicago. Two two pitch. It's under that one and out in front. Another foul ball parked down the right field line. It's still two and two on Mike. (laughs) 
Runner at second with nobody out. Sinking fastball is low. Ball three, strike two. Full count on the number eight man in the Cincinnati batting order today, Mike Lum. Retch would like to get him out of there. Looks at the brother at second, Concepcion. Breaking ball, and he lost him outside. Second walk in the inning. Once more, Willie Hernandez throwing in the cup bowl pen. We're going to have a pinch hitter now for Pedro Borbon. Head arm brisher. Got into yesterday's ball game as a pinch hitter. He's two for 12 as a pinch swinger this year. First inning, these two clubs tied a major league record, a total of five home runs, three by the Reds. In the seventh, Cincy with a one-run lead, 11 to 10, and an opportunity to expand it. Armbrister, right-hander. Here's the pitch. He's going to buck, and he takes a strike at the bat out there. In the on-deck circle, the lead-off man, Pete Rose. A ball who came out of relief in the fourth and a bit of a jam. As a result of two walks, the right-hander's pitch, Armbrister bunts it foul on the third base side, and he's in the hole, nothing in two. Eight Cup fans from the Maple Lanes in Sheboygan, Wisconsin. They're lending their voices to the enthusiasm of the other Cup fans here today. Proud of somewhere around 32, 33,000 of a guess. Maybe a little bit bigger. Armbrister's not sure of the sign from George Sugar at third. Rechecks. Now the right-hander steps back in. With a nothing and two pitch coming up, nobody out, runners at first and second, Paul delivers a swing and a foul back out of play in a fastball. A day in advance, a happy birthday. The young Tom Greyer from Sugar Grove and Jim Lightness from Newark. Both will be celebrating birthdays tomorrow. Well, the Cubs will be opening their road trip at Houston. The stretch, the 0-2 delivery, curve, strike, free call. Pinch hitter, Ed Armbrister. Set up to sacrifice, couldn't do it, and is caught looking at strike three. One away. That for Paul is his first strike out of the day. And Herman Franks may be going to make two changes now as Pete Rose is going to be the hitter, followed by left-hander Scrippy and Morgan. And he has Hernandez ready in the bullpen, bringing out his lineup card as he's talking with Mitterwald and Paul Russell on the mound. And Andy Olson, plate umpire, beckoned to by Herman as he wants to give him his changes. We are in the seventh inning at Wrigley Field. There have been a total of 27 base hits so far. Eight home runs. I'm sorry, seven home runs. Four by Cincy. But don't go away. The score, Cincinnati 11, the Chicago Cubs 10, while Willie Hernandez comes in. Let's take time out for this message. You know lawns come in many shapes and sizes. So do lawn cheap mowers from True Value Hardware Store. They offer a complete line of gas and electric power mowers and heavy-duty lawn tractors in sizes from every type of lawn from a small city lot to a sprawling country estate. For average-sized lawns, they offer rotary mowers and self-propelled models with 18 to 22-inch cutting widths, plus a high wheel power for rough, bumpy areas and a rear bagger model that mows easily in narrow places. To cut big lawns down to size, you'll find Lawn Chief riding mowers and heavy-duty tractors with 25- and 36-inch cutting widths, forward and reverse speeds, and many other features. True Value Hardware stores own their own Lawn Chief mower factory. 
where they design and manufacture their lawn cheap mowers to exacting standards with performance, convenience, and user safety in mind. So no matter what size lawn you own, you'll find a matching lawn cheap mower exclusively at participating True Value Hardware stores. worked in both games with a double letter yesterday. And he's going to praise Pete Rose with Cincinnati runners at first and second. One away. Bob Rome's family. Here from Beersdale, Illinois. That they tell us is just outside of Decatur. And they sent up a peacock, brother from their peacock. How about that? Well, Brother Rhodes is going to be 13 tomorrow. And Ann says she's going to be 14 tomorrow. Well, happy birthday to both. Rose batting right-handed. A homer and a single today for the veteran. Runners at first and second. Hernandez first pitch a slight call to the fastball to Pete. His homer was his seventh of the year. That triggered the fireworks. Let off the ball game against Ray Burris. Willie checks the runner, delivers. Outside and low ball one strike one. Move that Concepcion. Working back towards the bag at second. Cincy with 15 hits, the Cubs with 12, and the Reds with a one-run lead, 11 to 10. Seventh inning. One-one pitch, runners go. It's low, and Minerwall can't find a handle on it. It's into the dirt, and they have runners at second and third. So Concepcion gets his 23rd stolen base of the year, and Mike Lum winds up with a stolen base. That for Mike is his second. Now the infield will be coming in, and the Jesus on the left side, right up on the edge of the grass. They're going to put De Rose on intentionally now after the double set, and hopefully they can be able to come up with a double play ball. When Woody came in, Kelleher came in to play second, and he'll be batting in the ninth spot in the batting order with Woody batting where Manny Creel was. The walk issued to Pete Rose to load him up for Ken Griffey. Two singles and a homer for Griffey this afternoon. He has eight hits in the series. In 16 at bats. The homer was a left-hander's ninth of the year. Enfield hoping for a double play ball. Hernandez winds the pitch. Swung up. And he fouls it. Comes back on the line of the plate in third. These teams are four homers away from tying a major league record. A home runs in a ball game by both clubs. Well, he gets his sign from Minnewall. Looks at the runner at third. Delivers. Griffey takes it high. Ball one, strike one. Well, we'll be on the road at Houston and Cincinnati. Following this ball game today, the Cubs then will be coming back to take on San Diego. Here's a swing and a ground ball right side. Keller dives, can't get to it. It's in the right field. Can set the out of scoring. Here comes Mike Love to the plate to throw to second. He slides. He is safe at second base. Bobby Mercer wound up only about 60 feet out on the outfield grass on the right side after Kelleher dove head length out of the infield dirt to get that ball that barely got by him. And Griffey, with his excellent speed, seeing that, figured he could leg it out. He is now batted in his third and fourth runs of the day, and the Reds have a three-run lead. 14 to 10. Now has two singles, a double, and a homer today. 
Wind up in the pitch to Morgan. The infield in, and he takes. It's a strike. Wind up the delivery. Morgan lays off, and it misses outside of the knees. The left-hander, one and one. Wind may be blowing out in New York and Boston today, too. Blocker runs there. One one kicks. Gets under it. Fouls it back into the upper deck. One and two on Morgan. He has a single and a double. Everybody in your batting order. It's at least one hit. And only Johnny mentioned Geronimo had just one. One two pitch. Swung on and missed a good curveball down and away. Morgan is fan. With the score, 13 to 10. George Foster will be the hitter. Leading home run hitter. In fact, they're going to put him on to load up the bases and take their chances with Johnny Bench. Yep. That's ball one. An intentional one to Foster. Some of the crowd doesn't like it. The flying fan under the fire, maybe, huh? Appreciate the nice letter from a good cup fan in Chicago from North Odell, Dick Plucky. Hoping that the Cubs in the next few weeks are going to start uh, getting themselves more wins than losses, which of course has been the fate the last couple of weeks. But he, like all good Cubs fans, delighted that the Cubs are still on top in that National League Eastern Division. It was two months ago today. May 28th, as the Cubs climbed into first place, defeating the Pittsburgh Pirates here at Wrigley Field. Something has been dropped down to the warning track out in left field below the bleachers. Andy Olson, the plate umpire, is pointing out there. Larry Bittner is going up to pick it up. Larry picks it up, looks like a windbreaker, tosses it up into the bleacher fan. He dropped it out there in left field. Good arm. Bench stepping in. Three-run homer for Johnny in the first inning. Has walked twice and lined hard. First pitch gets under it. Hits a high fly ball. Mercer coming in. Calling for the ball. He's there. He's got it. The side is retired. And the intentional walk to George Foster pays off. They turned eight men to the plate in the seventh inning. Only one hit. But two runs for him. Four walks, two of them intentional, and three men left. Well, it's time for the seventh inning stretch at Wrigley Field. Well, I'm sure it's not too happy about the score, but they have high hopes as the Cubs come to bat at the bottom of the seventh inning. With the score, the Cincinnati Reds, 13, the Chicago Cubs, 10. Ready, people? Ready. Is everybody hungry? Yes. Where do you want to eat? Golden Bear. Why? Because for hot summer days, they got the best selection. Really? Do they have salads? Sure. Like a delicious shrimp salad? Yeah. And And they they have have the Mama Golden Bear salad, too. The one with ham, cheese, tomato, and egg wedges on fresh lettuce with your choice of dressing? Right. I like salads in the summer. So do we. Does Golden Bear have ice cream? We We like ice cream. Golden Bear has the fabulous Goldilocks Fairyland Fountain with super sundaes and sodas. And you should try the Goldilocks Dream Banana Split. We will. Goodbye. Hey, where are you all going? Golden Bear, Golden Bear, I am a where food is fun, Golden Bear. City loves 
the Cubs. When all is said and done, the Cubs will still be number one. Cubs, we love you. That's the friendly mailman from Rolling Meadows holding up uh, that sign just below us. I got a whole group from Rolling Meadows out here today, little leaguers. Robert C. Hyden, Jr. Rolling Meadows Park District. Group of uh, Cup fans here today. George Brennerwald. Homered when he let off the second inning. Wind up. Manny Sarmiento, their new pitcher, and the first pitch is a strike. Right-handed swinger out there, and he got into yesterday's action. Slightly built little fellow, and he's got a pretty strong arm. Wind up the pitch. Into the dirt. Ball one, strike one. Four ball on five innings of work, seven hits, six strikeouts, a couple of walks, and four runs. Dale Murray started. There's a swing and a drive in the right field. Griffey coming out. He's there. Makes the head-eye catch. And there's one out in the seventh inning. That'll bring up Mick Gallagher. Batting for the first time in the ball game, Hitting in the number nine spot. Hitting 288 for the year. The Miles Little League Giants out here today, and boy, do we want to congratulate that bunch. They posted 18 wins, no losses. Perfection. The Niles Little League Giants. Mick Dix, and the first pitch is a strike to the right-hander. The coaches are out here with them, too, and they did a good job. They had to. Al Fritzy, Jerry Kurtz. Oh, one delivery. Charmiento throws it into the dirt. Let's pause for station identification. This is the WGN Chicago Cubs Baseball Network. WGN Radio Chicago, 82 degrees at Midway Airport at one minute before four. Bottom of the seventh, Cincy with a 13 to 10 lead. There's a soaring fastball that he goes after, fouls it back up under the knee, out of, under the net. Ball one, strike two. Yankees really want a Baltimore today. Orioles had beaten New York last night 6-4 in a big, big house at Yankee Stadium last night, about 47,000. Today, the Yankees came out a big winner, 14-2. One-two pitch. That goes after the fastball. Hops it foul. Johnny Bench has a play in the ball. He's got it. All he had to do was turn around. Take about two steps. Two gone in the bottom of the seventh. Bases are empty. Yvonne de Jesus doubled and scored in the first inning. After his double, Larry Bickner drew a walk, and Bill Buckner got his first home run at Wrigley Field in a Cubs uniform. He reached on an error in the second inning and scored. His one for four today. Ball out of one. Fastball, low ball, or strike one, I'm sorry. Off the corner. The knees. Sarmiento winds, sidearm pitch, outside, now it's 101. This guy looks like a strong wind would blow him right off the mound. Wind up the pitch. The ace swings out in front of it, fouls it down the left field line. The Wendy's baseball team sitting behind home plate today. their yellow caps on this afternoon with their coach, Daryl Brazel. Cubs trailing by three runs. Samietto's next pitch, a fastball is low, ball two, strike two, with two gone. Bottom of the seventh inning. Slowed down a little bit since that wild, wild first inning when the Reds batted around, put six runs on the board. The Cubs came back with four runs in the bottom of the inning. 2-2 pitch. Strike, three call. And Yvonne disgustedly whips the bat away. So the Cubs go down in order. 
in the bottom of the seventh inning. And at the end of seven here at Wrigley Field, the Cincinnati Reds, 13, and the Cubs, 10. Today's politicians have nothing on George Borkowski. The Guinness Book of World Records says old George shook 37,500 hands in 7 hours, 15 minutes, and 18 seconds. He did it in London, England on February 22, 1967. The Guinness Book of World Records is chock full of these gripping tales. Too bad Guinness doesn't have a section on big car dealers operating out of small towns. If they did, a page or two would have to be devoted to Wild Olds in Libertyville, Illinois. That's because Wild's selling new Oldsmobiles at a record-breaking pace. People from all over Illinois have combined with neighboring states to make Wild in Libertyville the world's largest Oldsmobile dealer. What's Wild got the others don't? Why do smart shoppers come from far and wide to buy their new Oldsmobiles at Wild in Libertyville? The answer to the world's worst-kept secret awaits you in Libertyville, Illinois, home of Wild Olds, the world's largest Oldsmobile dealer. Well, not since 1969 is a three-game series drawn as many paid fans as this one has between the Cubs and the Cincinnati Reds. The paid attendance today, 32,155. So the Cubs and the Reds in these three days have drawn 111,373. The Cubs now at about 900... 42,000. Well, almost 943,000 at home for the year. Willie Hernandez winds. Geronimo swings in the first pitch and lops one high and deep to right center field. It is gone. Geronimo on the very first pitch of the inning. Wall up to seventh home run of the year. And home run number five by the Reds this afternoon. Now these two clubs are only three runs away from tying a major league record. And it was hit. Now 14 to 10. Stepping into the batter's box, Dave Concepcion, he takes the ball outside. He takes, there's the ball. The five homers that the Reds have hit so far today is their high this year in a ball game. Two will pitch. Fastball taken for a strike at the letters. They got three in the first inning. Rose, Bench, and Mike Lum on off Ray Burris. Rippey. There's a swing and a high fly ball to Jerry Morales in center field. Should be the first out. It is. Ken Griffey led off the sixth inning with a homer off Paul Russell. Now Geronimo has led off the eighth inning with a homer off Hernandez. And Setsion is flat out to center field, and that will bring up Mike Lum. Homered in the first inning with a man on. Was after the first pitch. Didn't have much of a cut. Pops a foul ball. Middlewald having a play on it. He's got it. Right in front of the box seats in the third base side where the conduct emblem is buried. Two gone. Now Manny Samieto will be the hitter. Boy, this is really a wild one. Cincinnati, 14. The Cubs, 10. They have 17 hits. Yeah, the wind has been blowing up. Fabiano swings. One hopper to Buck near first base. He gloves it, comes over, touches the bag, and that retires the side. But it didn't take long, but they pick up a run. And Geronimo, seventh home run of the year. The only hit nobody left on, the Cubs, with six outs left in the ball game, come up here in the bottom of the eighth inning. Cincinnati, 14, the Chicago Cubs, 10. <laughs> Hyman's Oast, the legendary beer from God's country, is a beer brewed with sparkling, pure Wisconsin spring water 
in a traditional old world way of pure brewing, double brewing, called coisening. Coisening is the most natural way to brew beer and the most expensive. Most expensive because it takes more time. Heilemann's Old Style is one American premium beer that's still fully, that's fully coisened, naturally carbonated. Coisening is what makes Old Style a great light beer. Try Old Style and taste the difference poisoning makes. Old Style, pure brewed in God's country. Gene Heilemann Brewing Company, La Crosse, Wisconsin. Let's see if the Cubs can start finding the range again. They went down in order against this lightly built right-hander, Manny Sarmiento, in the seventh. Now we have Larry Bittner, Bill Buckner, and Bobby Mercer. All three left-handed hitters to go against him. Vince Lloyd and Lou Boudreau, and we hope you're enjoying it. We see the Wendy's team now. They've got uniforms on. The shirts are just like those of the Houston Astros. Just exactly. Wonder how come. Must have a ball game to play tonight. Well, come on, Larry. He has two hits today. Look at strike three. Walk. Ramiano's first pitch just strike. One of the knees. The crowd begins to open up. Little right hander in the mound. Wind up the pitch. Run on. Foul ball by the first baseline. Wait just a moment. Bob might have a chance to be in there. What a group of 37 here today from the Christian Reformed Church in German Valley, Illinois. Among the more than 33,000 total in attendance. The total is 33,286. Tommy, I know not, he said, as he gets a sign, the right-hander's next pitch, high and outside, one and two, he wasted it. Red Sox want the uh, Milwaukee, 12 zip. The Yankees, they said, rush. Call them on 14 to 2. Wind up, one, two, three. Fastball, he had to get back out of the way, it almost hit him in the legs, two and two count. The Summer Park Playground Group, from South Haven, Michigan, with 80 youngsters are here. Here the Cubs all the way. One of their playground leaders, Chip Foster, brought his mom along to help lead the cheers. Future pick. One arm bouncing ball, base hit in the right field. Does pass the first base of Lama, six for his hand. With his third hit of the ball game. Now the batter will be Bill Buckner, who had a three-run homer in the first inning. One of us, Bill's third home run this year. His first two had come on the roll. Since then, he had flied out twice to right, and it one beat to the center fielder, Geronimo. Back to the top, there's 13 hitters today. Sarmiento from the stretch. Buckner looking like he was going to try to push a button, but he's not going. They just wanted to see what Rose would do. And the pitch was a strike. We'll be at Houston tomorrow night. Start the road trip. And again on Saturday night. Then Sunday afternoon, then over to Cincy. Oh, one delivery coming up. Buckner Six, strike, a fastball, let her high and away from it. And he's not very happy with that call. Andy Olsen working behind the plate. Buckner's going to get out of there for a moment. Vince Lloyd and Lou Boudreau here with you. Seems to me there have been a lot of those calls, Lou, that Andy today has given to the pitchers. They've been working on the outside of all the left-handed uh, hitters. The tough pitch, of course. Can't do much with it if you swing at it. He's out in front of Buckner. 0-2 delivery. 
gets under it and fouls it back. It's going to be out of play. Bench and wheeled, hoping to be able to get under it, but it's way back, just below our broadcasting booth. Lafayette, Indiana. Central Presbyterian Church is here today. Templin, Indiana. Cutback number 3151. Well, it would be nice to bail this one out. It's 14-10, to Cincy. Eighth inning. What ahead is a chant. Marmietto's pitch. Buckner takes the fastball. This time, he gets the call. Ball one, strike two. High and away. Everybody in the Cubs starting lineup today, including the starting pitcher, has at least one hit. Ray Burris was not in the scene long. Marmietto ready. Little guy fires, but there's swings, drive, right field, it's hit foul, back, back, back. Hey, got it, drop the bell right here. 14, it's foul, Buckner, second over of the year. Carry of the day. A scorecard blew out of here on that one. We didn't even notice it. There's some fans right below us here studying it. The mothers with transistor radio saying it belongs up here. Yeah, stars. <laughs> Thank you, guys. That's all right. Finish the beer. Don't spill the beer. Come on up, please. Get a pizza from Malnati's Pizza. Yeah, Lou Malnati sent a little pizza. Yes, you can come up, too. Oh, well, as pretty as you is sure a lot up here, I guarantee it. Billy Buckner, his second home run of the day. It is now 14 to 12. Cincy with a pair. Pair runs to lead. Mercer takes. There is a ball. Count is one to one. Four home runs by the Cubs today. Tomietto's next pitch. Mercer gets under it, fouls it back up onto the screen. Buckner now with four homers and the five runs batted in in this ball game, giving. 29 for the year. Marmiano was out in front of him. Anything can happen. Here is a swing and a miss for strike three, including a strikeout. And I say anything can happen. One gone in the bottom of the eighth inning, and Jerry Morales will be the hitter. He was the last Cub in the starting lineup today to get a base hit. Singled with two out in the sixth inning. And out of errors through a walk, but the inning ended on a pop-up in the shallow right field. Well, Manny, one, or Jerry, one for four today. Takes the first pitch. In too close a fastball. Bruce Suter, Pete Broberg are throwing in the Cub bullpen. Wind up the 1 0 delivery. Swing on. There's a deep drive. Left field, it is. Oh, look at that. Oh, the ballpark over the left field wall. It is now the Reds 14, the Chicago Cubs 13. Jerry Morales takes a deep, wide turn at the shortstop position, circling the bases. He is getting a standing ovation. to ring the bell. We want to thank you for... We want to thank you very much for bringing, bringing the scorecard up. Thank you for letting me do it. You are... 
Ann Chamberlain from Wolcott, Indiana. And who's with you? My father, Max Chamberlain. Max, you've got a beautiful rod in him. Thank you. Thank you for bringing him on. We're enjoying the game very much. Is that wild? Yes, it is. And uh, this isn't your first trip to Wrigley Field, Ann, is it? No, it's uh, <laughs> I just love it up here. It's a beautiful field. Yes, it is. Thank you so very, very much. Sit down and relax. The hitter, Steve Montebarras. Fastball, outside. He has taken the first one for a ball. But Jerry Morales, with his eighth home run of the year. Let me tell you, it's hard to believe what is going on here today. Jerry's left the ballpark. The second straight hit. The second home run off on the end of the inning. And there is ball three. The Cubs with 15 hits. Five home runs. Cincinnati with 17 hits. Five home runs. And these two clubs now are one homer away from tying a major league record. They not only tie it, they may bust it wide open. 3-0 delivery. Otterberg takes ball four. Darky Anderson puts his head down. Paces back and forth in that dugout on the first base side. This is the spot where the pitcher, Willie Hernandez, is due to bat. When Herman made a double change back in the seventh inning, he put Hernandez in frail spot and brought Kelleher in, hit in the number nine position, because Mick was going to be the second batter that way in the seventh inning. Now Greg Wills is going to bat. Sparky has a left-hander throwing in a hurry. That looks like Joe Horner down there, Lou, isn't it? It is Joe Horner, but Sparky also knows that Cardinal is available. Yeah. <laughs> well, who do you want? Sarmiento against Greg Gross or Joe Horner against Jose Cardinal? Ten home runs at Wrigley Field so far today. Now I see Joe Wallace coming out. Gross apparently was in the on deck circle, but he was not announced, I don't think. That was a fake. Now this Wallace is announced right now. The strategy there, of course, Wallace is a switch hitter. tell you. This is not the kind of a game for the baseball purists. But let me tell you, it's a whole heck of a lot of fun. <laughs> yeah, if you can come out on top. Oh, yeah. Oh, we're going to win it. We're going to win it now. Here comes Larry Shepard out of the dugout again. Samiento has been keeping loose out there while... Uh, Cubs have been having a little cat and mouse game. Now, as we told you earlier, Bruce Suter and Pete Froberg had been throwing in the Cub bullpen. Neither is up now. There's one out. The score, 14 to 13, in favor of the Cincinnati Reds. The Cubs at the bottom of the eighth inning. Bittner open with his third hit of the day, a single to right. Buckner brought him in with his second home run of the day. Mercer fan, but Morales got his second straight hit. A home run his eighth of the day. Sarmiento obviously shaken, walked out of air some four pitches. Now, Tars Wallace stepping in as a pinch hitter. Right-hander in the hill from the stretch. Wallace takes it. It's a strike. As a pinch hitter, 
Wallace is 0 for 8. But he's drawn a few walks as a pinch hitter. Half of the year, he's batting 290. The stretch by Sarmiento. The pitch, Wallace swings at a high pop foul. Pete Rose has room in foul territory. He's got it. Snatches it out of the air with those two hands. Typical Pete Rose catch. Wallace makes the second out of the inning. And here is George Middlewald, who led off the second inning with a homer, his seventh of the year. He is one for four today. This has got to be one of the craziest ball games of all time. That's the pitch. One not. Hayes drive down the left field line. Should be a base hit. It is. Going for extra base. Out of air. It's coming around third. Lowry has to hold him up. Middlewald is in with a double. Good quick feeling by George Foster. Boy, I wish that ball had gotten away from him. Lou, we could have tied up the ball game. Yes, indeed. That would have been a, a great job by Middlewald down that line. But credit Foster with a great play. That's a tough one to handle. He backhanded it. And that's where the foul line is almost at the wall. He pushed himself off that wall where the rubber cushions are. Gave himself a little extra leverage as he wheeled and fired perfectly on a line to third. And Lowry, seeing that excellent bit of defensive work by the Reds' left fielder, had to hold up out of He'd have been a dead duck if he'd have tried to score. So it's a double for Minowal, his second hit of the ball game. Now the Cubs have the tying run at third, the go-ahead run at second. And Greg Rose is now officially announced as a pinch hitter. And Sparky Anderson has veteran Joe Horner still throwing in the bullpen. Joe, of course, is a fellow who was a pitching coach in Indianapolis for the Cincinnati Reds. He was doing a little pitching down there this year when they really got the shorts in the pitching department. They brought him up to the Major League Club and activated him full-time as a pitcher. He originally is from Dubuque, Iowa, but a well-traveled guy, and he's, he's a veteran. But he's not going to bring him into this spot because they're going to walk Rick Rose intentionally to load the bases with two guards. Now, Gross is batting for Kelleher here. Well, the Cubs issued a an intentional walk to George Foster. The Reds had runners at first and second with two gone. While Foster had bat on a pitch into the dirt, both men were going. It resulted in a double steal. Then the Cubs decided they would put Foster on intentionally with first base open after the double steal and that paid off because the next hitter Johnny Bench went after the first pitch and popped it up into shallow right field to retire the side now an intentional walk to Ivan De Jesus who will bring up Ivan De Jesus although Herman taking a look down in his bench said something that brought a big Friend to Jose Cardinal's face, and Jose gets up laughing. Herman said something to him that busted him up completely. This is one of the remarkable things about uh, the Cub skipper this year, Herman Frank. Here you are in a ball game. He's got a slender lead of a game and a half in the division. This is one of those seesaw back and forth jobs. Everybody who gets up there seems to be swinging from the heels. He's trailing in the ball game, and he goes down the bench, and he says something to Cardinal that cracked him up completely. So you got a pretty loose Jose coming out as a pinch hitter for Ivan De Jesus. He still hasn't used Gene Flines. Davey Rosetto, of course, is still available as a shortstop. Swisher's available to do some catching. But Fennewald is still in the ball game.
Jose as a pinch hitter this year has a remarkably good record. He's been called upon officially 11 times and has six hits as a pinch hitter. Six for 11. With two runs batted in. Now, of course, he had been on the disabled list for quite a while. And when he uh, came off, I don't know, he might have been hitting a little over 100. But since coming off the disabled list, and listen to the... Or the streaks his name as it's announced by Jimmy Enright. He has 16 for 54 since coming off the disabled list. He's been stinging the ball. So we're in the bottom of the eighth. The score, Cincinnati 14, the Chicago Cubs 13, and I'm not kidding you, that's the real score. Two outs, the base is loaded. Cardinals bat is being expected by Andy Olsen. Jose folded his hand while the plate up fire inspected it, and he says, yeah, I guess it's legal. Go ahead. <laughs> I can't believe this day. <laughs> He's the ninth Cub to come to the plate in the eighth inning. Wind up the pitch. Takes. Strike at the knees in the inside corner. Perfect pitch by Sarmiento. Right-hander working from a windup. Here's the pitch. Takes strike this time he hit the outside corner. You talk about pinpoint placement. The first pitch of strike, knee high, barely nicked the inside edge. The second one barely catching the outside corner at the knees. So Jose is in the hole, nothing and two with two off the base is loaded. Eighth inning, 14 to 13, Cincinnati. Wind up the pitch. Takes the fastball and misses outside. He wasted it. One and two. So far, only 33 hits. After the Cubs, five home runs. For Cincinnati, five home runs. And now, by the now, let's ask Andy Olsen to take a look at the ball. He finally gets Sarmiento's attention. Gets the ball, decides it. Okay, keeps it in play. So the drama continues. The wind up the pitch. Swung out a drive foul into the box seats down the right field line. Ball one, strike two. On Coming over to say something to Sarmiento. The tying run, Steve Otteveras at third. George Minerwall, the go-ahead run is at second. On at first base, pinch hitter Greg Gross, who has walked intentionally. Now Jose Cardinal with a chance to be a hero again. The wind-up on the one-two pitch. High. Ball to strike two. Rising fastball. <laughs> oh, man. you got to love this kind of a game. The Reds, you know, got six runs in the first inning. They batted around. Two-two pitch. Run out a high fly ball. Unless there's a miracle. Clyde is going to be retired. No miracle. Geronimo caught it. Three runs in the eighth inning. Four base hits, two homers, one double and a single. Two walks, one intentional, three men left on. So at the end of eight full innings of play, don't you go away. Cincinnati coming to bat, they lead 14 to 13. Friends, now you can water your lawn without watering your house, your driveway, and your guests. Just go to your True Value Hardware store and get a multi-pattern lawn sprinkler. That's designed to keep the water on your lawn. Not on your house. See your friends. Like the Nelson Poppy three-arm sprinkler, it whirls waters in squares so you can water right up to the edge of your yard without sprinkling the sidewalk or the house. True Value Hardware Stores also 
have the Nelson Beta Impulse Sprinkler. It has more sprinkling patterns than the standard revolving model, so it gets those hard-to-reach spots without wasting water on the house. Now you can water your lawn without watering your house, and guess, get Nelson Multi-Pattern Lawn Sprinkler at participating True Value Hardware stores. First appearance is just prior to the all-star break. He'd thrown some on the sidelines yesterday. And during the ball game, he was warming up. Now, he is in as the relief pitcher in this 99th game of the season for the Cubs. There's five wins, one loss. He has worked 81 innings. Has 24 saves. Davey Wilsotto is a new shortstop. And Jess who is playing second base. If you said Jose Cardinal, you're absolutely right. Rose stepping in. He swings, ground ball to Cardinal. Down to his knees. Picks it up, throws. Hey, the first base. Thought he had it. Jerry Tatum, or Jerry Crawford, down there on one knee, and he says he beat it out. That's going to be an error on Jose on his first chance at second. He went down to his knees to block the ball, scrambled as it bounced away from him off his chest, threw it a buckner, and it was very, very close, but Crawford had an excellent position on it to make the call, and he says he's safe. So it's an error on Jose. Rosetto is at short. Out of Harris and Buckner at the corners. Mitterwall still the catcher. Suter on the hill. Rollis in center. Bittner and Mercer in left and right. Now, this could be a real problem. Rosetto says, you go over and play shortstop. I'll play second base. Back and have you comment on that in a minute, Will, but we got to pause. Seen everything in baseball? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if he well, goes up the left-handed hitter, they may switch around if we get a right-handed hitter back in there. Uh, I know we got to have an idea here in a moment. We will. We got to take a moment here for this pitch too. Consider into the stretch delivers. Swing and a miss by Ripley for strike one. A good fastball. Let's pause. Station identification. This is the WGN Chicago Cubs Baseball Network. WGN Radio Chicago, 27 minutes until 5 o'clock. How do you show on your scorecard that they flip flop? Looked like he wanted a bunt and he takes the ball all outside, one on one. I wonder if Cardinal has played in the infield before in the majors, Lou. Think so? I doubt it. I doubt it. And I wonder if that's what Herman had asked him in the dugout that really cracked him up before he came out the pinch hit. Here's the pitch. Swing and a miss, and there's that real fine split finger curve on fork ball. One and two. I want to see Jose cover second when Rose makes an attempt to steal a second. He's Ooh. talking to one another now. Yeah. Right now. Sitters, one, two, pitch. Swim out and that's for strike three. He looks like he is back right where he was when he was at his peak this year. That for Mr. Suter is his 96th strikeout of the year. Only Rick Russell has any more on the cup pitching staff. Rick with 101. Jose coming over from his shortstop position. He's giving Suter a little advice. <laughs> oh, he told Suter, make him pull a ball. Don't hit it over here. <laughs> That's good advice. Joe Morgan stepping in. He takes the first one high, ball one.
strikes the pitch. A little high. Ball two. And he has not gone to that splint fingered uh, curve or fork ball to Morgan on those first two pitches. Fourteen thirteen, the Reds lead. Morgan takes fastball is outside. He's now going to three and zero on him, and he wants another baseball. Pete Rose reached on a ground ball. The Cardinal was playing at second base after coming in as a pinch hitter. We've used Trail. We've used Kelleher. Rio pitch goes after it. Fouls it back up out of the screen, and it's three and one on Morgan. He had a good rip at a fastball that he just barely got under. They have five home runs. The Cubs have five home runs. They're one homer away from tying a major league record for homers by both clubs in a game. There's a swing and a... There he came back with that good fork ball. Three and two. But he did not use it in the first three pitches to Morgan. Maybe he was afraid, Lou, he'd throw it into the dirt for Mitt Rose to get the second on a wild pitch. I don't know. Well, he did have trouble with the baseball, and since he's yeah. changed it, he's thrown two strikes. There goes Rose. Here's a swing ground ball. Buckner catch. Take the play on it. It's picked up by Rosetto. He throws to Buckner, and he's called play for first base on another very close one. And Herman Franks is going out to beef on this one. Buckner is really hot. That was a bullet. Hit to the cup first baseman. A tremendously hard shot. It caromed away from him. Rosello alertly moving over towards first base to back it up. Got it. Buckner got to his feet. He was on the bag at first. Rosello picked the ball up. Crossed it in her hand to Buckner. It appeared as though he might have had him on a close play. But Jerry Crawford has given the call to the Reds on that one. That's the third close one that he has given to them today. And Herman is really hot. And he's giving it to that rookie. And they're going nose to nose. He's out. Herman has been thrown out of the ball game. But he is going to continue to have his play because he is really hot. They were nose to nose and chest to chest. And Herman going back and forth with his shoulders and his head and his heated argument for a moment lost his cap. He's got it back on. Doug Harvey is stepping between him and the rookie umpire trying to calm him down. A little I don't blame him. That's three over there that's going against us today. That's true. And did you see Doug Harvey say he told Olsen to take care of Crawford and <laughs> Harvey is in front of Herman because they don't want to have any tempers here that uh, they want to lose their head. It's all right to argue and port your point, but I've never seen Herman this upset, so Crawford must have retaliated with something that really irritated Herman. Well, my man is not jolly right now, I guarantee you. He is hot. Not just for having been thrown out of the ball game, but you've got to remember, this ball club, the Cubs, are in a whale of a divisional championship fight. At every call, um, one like that, you don't know in the long run, that may be the difference between winning or losing a championship. And he's right in this ball game, a wild one, 14 to 13. He had a call on Pete Rose, it was a close one. To open up this side inning. Now he gets another close one, and Morgan is called safe at first base, and they've got men at first and second with only one out. You know, I, I don't recall seeing Buckner argue no, sir. on a play that has been that close. He's had, he's the first baseman who's had a lot of close plays during the year. He's still carrying it out over there with Crawford. Now, we have, and we've told you this many times, a television monitor in our booth here at Wrigley Field, and we watch those replays just like you do if you're watching television at home or wherever you may be. And I thought I thought that Morgan was out on that one at first base. Now, Cardinal is shortstop, or at second base, Rosello is over at short. 
And George Foster swings and misses for strike one. They flip flopped again. And the Cincinnati Reds were retired in the top of the ninth inning by the Chicago Cubs. Then in the Cubs half of the ninth inning, that is the bottom of the ninth, with Joe Horner pitching for the Cincinnati Reds, after two men are out, Bobby Mercer comes to the plate and singles. There's a ground ball in the right field, a base hit for Mercer. A walk to Jerry Morales sent Bobby Mercer to second base and brought up Steve Ontiveros. Here we go. And there's a drive in the left field. It's a base hit. Come on, Bobby. Foster has a tremendous arm. It's going to be close. He scores. He scores. And now we resume live action of the coverage of this game with Davey Rosello at the plate. And the score tied in the bottom of the ninth. This is just unbelievable. There's Davey Rosello. I may have wished that ball over the head and the glove of Dave Concepcion. He leaped and he just missed it. First two batters were retired here in the ninth. Now the screw ball is outside. Ball one strike one. But you never know. Mercer. Bounce one through the right side for a hit, and he is now in the dugout, having scored the Cubs' 14th and tying one of the game. There's a ball too high, ball two, strike one. A walk to Morales, who's now at second base, and out of airs with a tying game single at first. Ball swung out of it. That was a little high, but he was eager. One after, two and two. Got a pause for station identification. This is the WGN Chicago Cubs Baseball Network. WGN Radio Chicago, 80 degrees at 5 o'clock. Here's the pitch. Swung out. Liner to the first baseman to retire the side. I don't believe it. He just missed winning the ball game. Well, the liner to the first baseman. Got it right off the end of the bat, and he hit it hard. Rob was playing deep, and the crowd is giving the Cubs a standing ovation. They haven't had enough. We've only played nine innings. And in the ninth, one run, two hits, a walk, and two men left. It is now tied 14 to 14. <laughs> if you're in the market for a used car, come home to Fireside Chrysler Plymouth in Schaumburg. No doubt about it. You'll feel right at home in a relaxed setting that includes couches, easy chairs, and plenty of hot coffee. And instead of working a fast deal in some cramped office, you'll have a fireside chat with understanding salespeople who know full well that even a used car is a big, big purchase for the average working person. Best of all... Every fireside used car is thoroughly inspected. They take a lot of autos in trade, but only the cream of the crop are offered for resale. So if you want a safe, dependable auto at a price that will keep you safely within your budget, come home to Fireside Chrysler Plymouth. They're located on Gulf Road, just west of the Woodfield Shopping Center in Schaumburg. Now remember, if you buy a used car from Fireside... There's no doubt about it. I'm just looking over this record book, Flo, and we know that the record for most home runs in a game by both clubs is 11. doesn't say here, but it's... Well, let's see. In the... Uh, Nationally, Pittsburgh and Cincinnati had 11, and that was in a 13-inning game in 1966. The Cubs and the Mets back in 67 had uh, many 11. The Cubs getting seven, and the American League record is also 11, I guess, for nine innings. All right, Lou, let's go. First pitch strike. We're in the 10th inning. Geronimo at bat facing Suter. Strike one pitch. 
Swing and a miss on that fork ball. Strike two. Mercer is in the infield now at second base, and uh, Cardinal is in right field. Here's the pitch. Swing, a line drive down left field line, falling quickly. Mitter is there. He makes the catch. Running into the bullpen. What a great catch. Let me tell you, I don't know how many men have been in this lineup for both teams, but they have given extra effort today. It's been tremendous. Cardinal started out at second base, went to shortstop, went to second base as they scissored on right-handed and left-handed hitters. Now Cardinal is in right field. He holds up his hand. Here I am. I'm here. Here's Concepcion at bat. Nobody on base. Two strikes on Concepcion. The wind up and pitch. Strike three call. Concepcion is called out on strike. He can't believe it. I don't believe there was any doubt in that last pitch. It looked to me right down the middle. And he took it. Now here's Lum at bat. Two outs. Four strikeouts for Suter. Now they're moving. They're going to switch around. Mercer is going to play shortstop. Uh, and Rosello is going to go to second because Lum is the left-handed here. Everything has happened in this ball game. This is perhaps the first time Mercer has been at shortstop in the major leagues. Outside, ball one on the first pitch. I think, uh, uh, you're right on that, I'm, I'm sure, and I think he came up as a shortstop uh, out of Oklahoma, the same as Mickey Mantle did in the low minors, didn't he? In the minor leagues. Yeah, yeah. Ball two inside to Lum. Fred Norman, the pitcher, do up next. Swing and a miss. Two and one. We had to send the scorecards to Cooperstown. Look, <laughs> I can't read mine. Chinese puzzle, I'll tell you. The score, I think, is 14 to 14. There has been five home runs hit on each side, and we're in the tenth inning. This has been better than a one to nothing game. Oh yeah. Strike call. Two and two. On Lum. Top of the tenth inning, two outs. The pitch on its way. Low, he stayed off of it. Three and two the count. Pete Broberg warming up in the Cubs bullpen. Herman Franks has been ejected from the ball game. By Crawford. Swing it! strikes out. A standing ovation for Suter and the Cubs. In the 10th inning for Cincinnati, no runs, no hits, nobody left on base. The Cubs coming to bat in the 10th inning with a chance to win it. 14 to 14. <laughs> Legendary beer from God's country is a beer brewed with sparkling, pure Wisconsin spring water in a traditional old world way of pure brewing, double brewing, called croisoning. Croisoning is the most natural way to brew beer and the most expensive. Most expensive because it takes more time. 
Heilman's Old Style is one American premium beer that's still fully, that's fully coarsened, naturally carbonated. Poisoning is what makes Old Style a great light beer. Try Old Style and taste the difference poisoning makes. Old Style, pure brewed in God's country. I'm not sure, but the announcement I think came from the press box. With all the noise here, the crowd shouting out, we're number one. And the Cubs are making Cincinnati fight for a victory, if they get the victory here. But the Cubs now can win it in the bottom of the 10th. 14 to 14 the score, and Minnewall will lead off the 10th inning. I thought he said that Suter has at least one strikeout in the last 23 innings that he has worked. I want to go down and check it. But I, I'm not, I wasn't sure of that. I didn't hear it. Out. Minnewall will bat. He can hit one out of this ballpark. He hit one in the third inning which was his seventh of the year. Fred Norman, the pitcher. A tough decision coming up next. Would you remove Suter, or would you let him hit? Here's the first pitch to Mitterwall. Swing and a foul. There's only one thing on Mitterwall's mind right now. Drive that ball out of this ballpark. Action galore here at Wrigley Field today. A little more action today than normal. Fred Norman, fifth Cincinnati Red pitcher, fires a curveball and a swing and a foul ball into the Cub bullpen where Pete Broberg is warming up. Suter is due up next. All-out effort by both teams here today. They have put on quite a performance. Swing and a miss on a high curveball, and George was going for the downs. There's no doubt about that. Now Suter will bat for himself. The Cubs brass want Suter to remain in the ballgame, and he's going to bat for himself. Figuring that the percentages are that we're at home, we get the last three outs, so anything can happen. Standing ovation. The pitch, swing and a miss, and Suter left his feet. He's trying to hit one out. One strike, one out, nobody on base, tenth inning. Cincinnati and the Cubs in a tie, 14 to 14. The next pitch is a call strike by the umpire Olson. Here's some guy who just got in his car to go home after work, and he heard you say 14 to 14. He goes, what's he drinking out there? <laughs> I wish he could bring something over here. See the rest of his ball game. Two strike pitch out of play. Curveball. A line drive base hit. Jose Cardinal. Shortstop, second baseman, and right fielder in three innings for the Cubs. Sooners on first base with the winning run. One out. The count of 0 2. Norman curbed Sooner, and he singled the center field. Cubs now with 19 hits. Once again, Olsen asked Cardinal to put that cap completely in the pocket because if the ball is thrown behind him and the ball hits that cap, Cardinal would want to get on base. 
are all set. Lum is holding Suter on at first base. The first pitch now to Jose. Low, ball one. The Chicago Cubs have really fought back in this one. Cincinnati scoring six runs in the top of the first. Had a six to nothing lead. It is now 14 to 14. The pitch. Curve ball low, ball two to Jose. Ball two, no strikes. One out, we're in the tenth inning. Norman into the stretch. Here's the pitch. There's the strike called over the outside corner. It was not the pitch Jose was looking for, so he took it. He figured he has two more strikes coming to him. The two and one pitch on its way. Low outside ball three. Bittner do up next. Suter checking his signs with Bloomfield, the coach. It's three and one on Cardinal. The pitch on its way. Pop foul out of play. Three and two now on Jose. Let's score a run or two here. If we go to the 11th, Cincinnati will have the pitcher and then the top of the order. Right now we have Cardinal at bat. Suter on first, one out. Bottom of the 10th inning. This perhaps is the longest game of the season for the Cubs right here at Wrigley Field. Here's the three and two pitch to Jose. Curveball low inside. Suter was going. It's ball four. It moves the winning run to second base. For Larry Bittner. No action in the Cincinnati bullpen. So Norman is all alone on that mound. Cubs with runners on first and second. One out. Larry Bittner, the hitter. Don't single, Larry. Double. So we can be sure of Suter scoring. Concepcion playing in around Suter. Keeping him close to second base. Here's the first pitch by Norman. There's a ball outside. Ball one. Bidner leveling that bat over the plate. The one ball pitch on its way. Curveball swing up. Norman knocks down the line drive, throws to second base, throw to first, too late. Jose was forced at second base. Oh. Let me tell you, Norman was quick thinking on that. Yes, sir. I was looking for him to take one, the sure man, at first. The ball was a line drive off of his glove. He's lucky to stop that ball. It had been through the middle for a base hit. He throws to Morgan, covering second to force Cardinal, and the throw to first was too late as Bittner beat the throw. And Simon. now... Yeah, Simon, he was upset with himself for not having fielded the ball cleanly to get a possible double play. I think it would have been a double play because he'd have caught yeah. the ball on the line. Now Buckner will bat. Runners on first and third. Two outs. And Lum is going to play behind Bittner at first. It's a fielder's choice for Bittner. We're going to win it right here. Buckner, the hitter, what a day he's had. Two home runs, five RBIs. Let's see if he can make it a half a dozen. The pitch. Curveball swinging Ooh. a long fly ball foul down the right field line. Buckner trying to hit through that spot. 
Although right now I see Lummis move back to a normal position, so they are not worried about Bittner. They're worried about Suter at third base. They're playing it as if a runner was on third only. Here's the one strike pitch to Buckner by Norman. He tries to buck. Oh, look out. A ball hit Suter. What a break for everybody. Then through to Rose trying to pick off Suter. And Suter was picked off by a mile. Yeah. But Bench's throw hit Suter in the back. That throw could have gone down the left field line. It could have caromed off a of Suter to any other place but where it did. It hit him squarely in the backside and it dropped right there in Rose's reach. Now time is called. Foster wants to know what's going on. <laughs> He's talking to Concepcion. Well, let me tell you, Suter was picked off. Oh. But as Buckner tried to bunt to get the run in and to get a base hit. He's bunting for a base hit with two, two outs. No squeeze involved whenever there's two outs. You can say he squeezed them in, but it wasn't a squeeze play. He now has two strikes on him, and I don't know what the conversation is going on between Foster, Concepcion, and then Concepcion has talked to Morgan and now to Lum. Cubs with runners on first and third, two outs, tenth inning. If you can think of it, it has happened today here at Wrigley Field. Norman is ready. He's into the stretch. Two strike pitch. Curveball swinging a tap over the pitcher's head. Whoa. Concepcion has it. Close to first in time to get Buckner, who is limping very noticeably down the foul line. Anybody else, or if Buckner was 100% well, he could have beaten that out. But as it is, Concepcion moves across in front of second base, throws to first for the putout. In the 10th inning for the Cubs, another thrilling half inning, but the Cubs couldn't score. No runs, one hit. Two men left on the bases. Now we move to the 11th inning with the Chicago Cubs 14, the Cincinnati Reds 14. Lawns come in many shapes and sizes. So do lawn chief mowers from True Value Hardware Stores. They offer a complete line of gas and electric powered mowers and heavy duty lawn tractors in sizes for every type of lawn, from a small city lot to a sprawling country estate. For average size lawns, they offer rotary mowers and self propelled models with 18 to 22 inch cutting widths, plus a high wheel mower for rough, bumpy areas, and a rear bagger model that mows easily in narrow places. To cut big lawns down to size, you'll find Lawn Chief riding mowers and heavy-duty tractors with 25 to 36-inch cutting widths, forward and reverse speeds, and many other features. True Value Hardware stores own their Lawn Chief mower factory, where they design and manufacture their Lawn Chief mowers to exacting standards with performance, convenience, and user safety in mind. So no matter what size lawn you own, you'll find a matching lawn chief mower exclusively in participating True Value Hardware Stores. I'm going to tell you, we have been here, this game started, I guess, about... Uh, close to four hours ago and it's been just nothing but one bit of excitement after another you say ah how could a 14 to 14 ball game be exciting that's not baseball hell it isn't (laughs) it is today it's great (laughs) and uh, not only will those ball players sleep well tonight but I think 32,000 other customers will sleep well tonight. They've been on the edge of their chairs here <laughs> all day. Now, Freddie Norman, he doesn't want to swing it, and he just took that first pitch and it's low for ball one. He's leading off. Cubs with 19 hit. Hey! Dodgers won! There's a ball too high. 
Dodgers defeated the Philadelphia Phillies 2-1. to one. They just put it up. Our Western Union ticker is lagging. It hasn't reported it yet. There's the strike. Wind up. That one sinks low. Two and two. Don't ask me how many uh, players we've used, but I know Gene Kleins is still available. Steve Swisher is still available. Two two pitch. Slaps a little foul ball. I think that's all outside of the pitchers. Long time ago, Ray Burr started. They batted around in the first inning, the Reds did, off Ray. Had three homers in that inning. Got six runs. The Cubs sent seven men to the plate in the bottom of the first inning. Got four runs on two homers. So they tied a major league record, these teams, with five homers in the first inning. There's a swing, and Norman lifts a high foul out of play. Burris worked two innings, Moore one. Ball Russell, three and a third. And he did a good job. Two hits and a run. Hernandez, two innings, two hits and a run. Suter now is starting his third inning. They have not had a hit off of him. He struck out five. Freddie Norman battling him here to open up the 11th inning. Bruce's next pitch high. Well, three strike two. He didn't throw that one uh, the way he normally does it all. Freddie is their fifth pitcher. Three two pitch. That's too high. And he did not have a good follow-through on that one. Bobby Mercer, the Cubs shortstop, and I'm not making that up, is coming over to talk to him. Nobody uh, throwing in the bullpen. Broberg had been up earlier. They would use Hernandez, Paul Russell, Donnie Moore, and Bruce at his first appearance. I just hope that going this, this is a second inning, yeah. third inning, then really, yeah. after five or six days layover, layoff, uh, uh, I, I don't know whether it's bothering him or not. I hope not. The last well, two pitches, uh, he threw to Norman. I didn't think he threw naturally at all. Rose is in there. He's going to bunt. Gets it out in front of the mound, picked up by Bruce. He has to throw to first. Rosello covering at first base. Now, Bullberg gets up and starts to throw in the bullpen. When he walks a pitcher, and the last two pitches that he threw to him are very, very high, and he didn't have a good ball to throw at all, I have to wonder whether he's okay. Rose is sacrificed. And Griffey steps in. He has four base hits today. Two singles, a homer, a double. He's batted in four runs. Suter's first pitch. There's a strike. And a good delivery on that one. The Yankees wallop Baltimore 14 to 2. Boston shut out Milwaukee, embarrassed them 12 to nothing. What's going on here today? There's a swing and a miss. That was a good cork ball that exploded on Griffey. And the Dodgers nipped Philadelphia 2 to 1. You know, if the Cubs could hold on. And bail this one out. They could have a two and a half game lead over the Phillies and either remain at two or go to three over the Pirates who play tonight. 0 2 pitch. Swing out of this. There again is that blazing, exploding fork ball. That's Bruce's sixth strikeout. It's coming on at the start of the ninth inning. I have to say, here is the toughest man in that Cincinnati lineup yeah. in a situation such as this. That's Joe Morgan. Singled and scored on benches, three-run homer in the first. Doubled in the sixth inning. Reached on an error. Well, it was a tough, tough play. Could well have been a hit for him. And Joe takes, and there's a strike at the knees inside corner. Stood are really firing. Thirty-six hits, 
Five homers by each club. Runner at second to pitch. Morgan takes it high. Ball one, strike one. Remember saying back in about the fifth inning that if you were listening, if anywhere near the ballpark, you still had plenty of time to come out and see a lot of action. Didn't know it would be quite that prophetic. One, one pitch. Swung out. He got a piece of that breaking fourth ball and fouled it sharply on a line to the plate in third, right back to the wall. So the count is one and two. Well, Western Union here has caught up with the ticker they have in the scoreboard. Yes, the Dodgers did win. With four hits, they beat the Phillies two to one with a winning run coming in the bottom of the ninth inning. Ron Say had a homer for their first run back in the fourth. One two pitch. High to Morgan, two two. Tommy John went all the way, a six hitter. Dummy now, 11 and 4 for the year for the Dodgers. Caught the loser, 4 and 6. 33,260 at Los Angeles this afternoon. Darn good crowd. Was that all in the outfield grass at first? Here's the pitch. Well, that pulls a ground ball. Knocked down by it. Buckner comes up the line. was foul. Gary Crawford made the call safe. I can't believe the play that Buckner made that time. Unbelievable. Morgan ripped the shot for just a fearful incident. It looked like it would be down the line for extra bases. Buckner dove, extended his body as far as he could go in a horizontal dive. Knocked the ball down. Got up. He wanted to throw to the pitcher who was not coming. And somehow he managed to get there and Derek Crawford with a perfect position view of it. Says this time the Cubs got the call. Oh, that was close, Lou. My oh, God. Oh, my. Did you see that, Buckner? He was thrown in air. I can't believe when that. When he dove after that ball. Actually, he caught it in foul territory, but the ball was hitting, bounding, see? Yeah. Sparky Anderson says that one of the umpires called it a foul ball. Maybe that the plate umpire. I didn't see Andy Olsen. I didn't see that. I was watching the ball. Yeah. I have no idea what Andy Olsen called on it. But that ball is a blistering shot. And I still can't believe that Buckner was able to make the stop on it and then get to his feet and somehow come back and win an excitingly close race with a very speedy Morgan. They got there just within an eyelash of one another. Well, Freddie Norman is out there throwing. Officially, they have been retired in the 11th inning, and it is still tied, 14 to 14. Now... We normally would take time out here for a commercial. I don't think we're going to have time for it right now because Bobby Mercer is getting set to step in there. We're going to skip the commercial and stay with you here. Well, we've had just everything in the world happen out here at this ballpark this afternoon. A long time ago, Herman Franks was thrown out of the ball game on a very, very close call at first base. It was the third one of the day. That one went to Cincinnati, and Herman got very upset about it, and eventually he got thrown out. Now, we do want to pause for station identification. This is the WGN Chicago Cubs Baseball Network. WGN Radio Chicago, 29 minutes until 6 o'clock. We looked at our television replay on that about three times, and it looked like the ball hit fair, was going over the bag, seemingly fair. First pitch to Mercer, right over his back as he ducks down. Ball one. And it was a close race to the bag also. 
There's a swing and a let up, and he bounces it foul almost into their dugout behind first base. On the replay, Vince, uh, Jack Minovitz has also a monitor back at our WGN studios, and he said that it shows that Crawford did point foul. Why did foul? Now, I didn't see it in my in our monitor. No, I didn't either. And that's what Sparky was arguing about. Wow. I don't blame him for arguing. 1-1 one, one pitch. Swung out of it. Good curve. All right, Bobby, come on. It's getting late. We're getting hungry. How about... What do you mean getting hungry? hungry. Yeah. I've been hungry since 1.33 I'm when this right. game started. I'm all right. I still had the wrong side of the scorecard up. <laughs> I have two. <clears throat> Mercer homered back in the first inning. Seems like only yesterday. Has three hits for the day. Boy, what a big one he got in the ninth inning with two out. Bases empty when the Cubs were trailing. He singled and eventually scored the tying run on Steve out of Aris's two-out single. Nobody on when Mercer got that base hit. Two gone. One-two pitch. Curve into the dirt. Two and two. That poor bench and middle wall. They've been catching now for four hours. And there have been an awful lot of pitches into the dirt on both sides. Bench is dragging a little bit. Let's see. They've used arm brister. They've... I think they got more guys left in their bench than we have. They got uh, Auerbach and Bailey. They got Knight. They got Plummer. It's they got three. Steve Summers. 2 2 pitch. Swung on. Fouled it back. Just think how yeah. smart that Bill Berg is. He was out here and he left. I told him. Tell me why did he When he here? left, I said, Bill, there's no point in you going why back. You're no. not going to get out he of here. He should have known that. <laughs> Our telephone number for questions are... <laughs> Stay with him, Bill. <laughs> Sorry about those traffic reports. 2-2 pitch. Oh, oh. Oh. Got this one. Nail the outside corner with it. Freddie Norman's second struck out, I think. Here's Jerry Morales, who homered in the eighth inning. That's the last home run anybody has hit today. It was the tenth of the day. He takes the strike, screwball. Fourteen to fourteen. Boy, there's some exciting football games of that score out here over the years. Here's the pitch. Swung out of us. A beautiful screwball that time. Oh, this, two. This Norman, as you mentioned, worked seven innings in the first game of the series. By golly, he, he came on in the ninth inning of this one, didn't he? Yeah. He's earning his pay this week, too. Gary Morales. Oh, two pick. Strike. Free call. He wasn't ready for that one. Well, come on, Steve. Singled in the tying run in the bottom of the ninth with two off. Driven in two runs today with two hits. He's been on base four times as a pair of walks. He struck out his first two times up. To him, that must seem like yesterday or last week. Norman's first pitch. High, ball one. The Dodgers started their game an hour and a half after we got underway here. But they finished out on the West Coast. And they beat the Phillies 2-1. to 1-0 pitch. Fastball foul. Back up under the screen. The Phillies got to be wondering what in the heck is going on in Chicago. 14-14. to The best thing that can happen for them, of course, is they would still be a game and a half out. That would take a Cincinnati win. Everything in the world has happened here today. 1-1 pitch. Swung on. He fouls that one into the box seats, first base side. The paid attendance today, over 32,000. The total in the house, just under 33,300. 
And I got to say that no more than a couple of thousand who have left here. Only because they've had dinner appointments. Yeah. yeah. Or had to see their friendly neighborhood tavern. <laughs> or the washrooms are built. <laughs> that could well be. One, two, pitch. Low. Boy, I'd love to have the concessions out here today. More than 33,000 fans in a ball game now that's what, over four hours old. And everything has happened. Ten homers, five in the first inning. Two, two pitch. Well, that he gets under it, pops it up. May have a chance to drop. Morgan is out there. Look out! Little Joe grabbed it, and then he was tackled by the shortstop Concepcion. Almost ran into the center fielder as Morgan went way out into left center field. But he managed to hold on to the ball. That's the second baseman way out there in left center field. Concepcion brought him down with a tackle from behind. Well, on the 11th, the Cubs go down in order. Pete Broberg is now going to be the Cubs' sixth pitcher of the day. Souter worked three innings, gave up a hit, a walk, and struck out six men. No runs. Now it's up to Pete Broberg. And the score is still tied, 14-14. Say, if you ever come across a 1909 Chalmers Tour about, a 1910 Owen, or 1915 Nevada truck, let Mr. Hera of Reno, Nevada know about it. He needs those three models to complete his collection of vintage cars. Even without them, the Guinness Book of World Records says Harris 1,700 autos are worth four million bucks. And that makes it the greatest automobile collection of all time. <laughs> There's another great collection of cars right here in Libertyville, Illinois. It's Wild's collection of brand new six-cylinder Oldsmobiles. Choose from 150 gas-saving six-cylinder Starfires, Omegas, Cutlasses, and 88s. They're equipped in every way imaginable. Some of these sixes have nothing but the bare necessities, and some have everything from full power to stereo. In other words, you're sure to find a six-cylinder Oldsmobile equipped just the way you want it at the world's largest Oldsmobile dealer, Wild Olds in Libertyville. You'll save when you buy it, save when you drive it. So come out and see Wild's six-cylinder collection today. <laughs> Well, Gene Clines is going into center field and Pete Broberg, the new pitcher. The only other pitchers we got left now are starters Rick Russell, Bill Bonham, and Mike Kruko, and Steve Renko. Now, well, let's see. With Clines in there, the only um, infielder, outfielder that has not been used yet is Steve Swisher. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. 20 Cubs have been used so far, I think. And we have had Jose Cardinal play second base, shortstop. He's now in right field. We had Bobby Mercer play right field, shortstop. He's now at second base. Lyons is in center. Larry Bittner has been out in left field all day. And George Mitterwald has been behind the plate all day. George Foster leading off. And out of Harris, very deep and right inside the line of third. The right-hander takes and Broberg misses low, ball one. Reds with 17 hits. The Cubs with 19 hits. Broberg delivers. Fastball a little high, ball two. George Foster, two singles today. And he leads the majors in homers, and he leads and runs batted in. But he has not batted in a run yet today. And now Broberg is behind him. 2-0 pitch. Fastball for a strike. 2-1. and one. be one of the wildest games in years. Broberg winds. 
Buster swings, and he hits a high, deep drive, right field. Is there room? Bonnell can't get to it. It's off the mines. Here's Foster in the second base. Where the wall curves, where the bleachers are in right field, coming back in towards the field. That ball just missed going in there for a homer. And Cardinal going up against the vines as the wall moves back away from the infield, brushing up against him, just couldn't get tracked on that ball that came down through those vines, and I think, Lou, that may have been why he couldn't catch it. This is right. He was right in that corner. I thought it was out when it first left Foster's yeah. bat. That opposite field double. Got to be about the seventh double of the day. And there's Johnny Bench. That's their 18th hit of the day. Bench has won a homer with two men out in the first inning. Since then, he has walked twice, lined hard, flied out to right, and struck out. Here's the pitch. Very high, ball one. It's kind of a nervous quietness out here right now. The series has drawn more than any three-day series since 1969. Curveball. Then he takes it and it just missed down around the knees. Meadowall grousing a bit at Andy Olson, the plate umpire on that call. Finally turns and says something to him. He thought that should have been a strike. Well, Bench in there with a count of 2-0. and oh. Makes a big difference, just one call like that. Here's a stretch. The right enders next pitch takes. Fastball, a little high. Ball three. Broberg, number 40 in the Cub uniform, turns his back to the hitter. Now he climbs back up the hill. Yankees beat Baltimore today. Boston shut out Milwaukee, 12 0. The Dodgers beat Philadelphia. 3 0 pitch, a fastball too high. Ball four. Well, the Reds did not score in the ninth, the tenth, or the eleventh. They went down in order in the tenth. Did not get a hit in the eleventh. Matter of fact, they've only had one hit since the seventh inning, and that was the homer by Geronimo leading off the eighth. That went off Hernandez. But now they've got runners at first and second. Unless you're going to go to a starting pitcher, there's nobody else that the Cubs can go to now in that staff. And Peanuts Lowry's coming out with Herman Franks thrown out of the ball game in a heated argument with first base umpire Jerry Crawford. Peanuts is in charge of the club, and he's out there with a conference right now. And I would think, Lou, that they would be having Geronimo sacrifice. I would think so. So I think Lowry wants to be sure that Broberg knows the setup insofar as the defensive alignment of the Cubs or how they're going to try to play this bunt if Geronimo bunts. Geronimo, a left-hander. Out of Aris, looks like he may be holding back for the force play there. Sometimes they'll run the play where he comes up the line and the shortstop races to third here's the pitch, he swings and he drives a foul ball into the seats down the left field line and across him up now third base coach George Sugar peers across the diamond at Sparky Anderson who's either flashed him to sign or had somebody else flash it and he relays it to the hitter George Foster at second base Johnny Bench at first and Broberg on the hill in trouble. Here's the pitch. He's going to butt. Takes it high and tight. And he got out of the way just in time. It's one and one. See if they won't be having him sacrifice on this one. 14 to 14. At the end of one inning of play, it was six to four since he. Five homers have been hit then. Three by the Reds. So it's settled down considerably, isn't it? 1-1 delivery. He pushes the butt, pops it up. 
And it drops and goes foul. I Kevin have went foul or that had runners at second and third if it carried in the air just an instant longer out of Harris might have been able to get a play on it but as I said he was holding back for the force play at third had he been charging up the line he would have been able to catch that in the air and who knows he might have even had a double play but as it is it's ball one strike two Mitterwald is now going out to talk to Broberg since they brought him up from Wichita has worked Nine of the third innings. He's now given up ten hits, including the double here by Foster that narrowly missed being a homer. That would have tied the major league record of 11 homers in a ball game by both teams. Pete is 1-1 without a loss. Right-hander into the stretch. 1-2 delivery coming up, and he steps off the pitching rubber. Geronimo gets out of the batter's box. Yes, it's a single game, and we're still going at it. No rain delays. It's a lot of hits and a lot of runs. few arguments. We now have Bobby Mercer at second base. That's the kind of a day it is. Broberg checks the runner at second. Here's the pitch. Swung on at a high fly ball. Bittner coming over to his left. Larry gets under it, calling for the ball. Reaches up, hauls it in. Foster draws the throw and goes back to second base. One away. Geronimo was unable to sacrifice. Now the hitter will be Dave Concepcion, the shortstop. He has two hits today and a walk. Stolen a couple of bases. Batted in two runs. It's only the 12th. Broberg into the stretch delivers. Concepcion takes a ball, a little outside. Man, I wish you could get him to hit into a double play. Do up next is the left handed hitting Mike Lum. Broberg working on Concepcion. It's feet close together. Here's the pitch. Sidearm fastball, and it's low for ball two. Good Jack Billingham down there in their bullpen? Yes, yes it is. Huh. Runner at second is Foster. At bench at first, here's a hot swing, and the ball out to the mound. Broper throws to second, and it's... Drop by Rosello goes right off his glove in the center field. A run scores. Oh, man. He must have taken his eyes off the ball. Well, he didn't have his glove properly set, Vince. You watch how he tried to catch the ball. He didn't try. He tried to throw the ball before he caught it. Then the, the ball went right through his hands. He had the palm of his glove up to the sky. He didn't have the back of his hand to his face. Watch his glove. Taking a look at it. Look, it almost yeah. knocked the glove off of yeah. his hand. Looks like it might have hit right on the heel of it. Then it skidded way out in the left center field. There was a check swing by Concepcion, and the ball went out to the pitcher, Broberg. Wheeled to second to start a double play. The ball right off the glove of Rosello is playing it short, and a run scores. Now they lead 15 to 14, and they have runners at first and third. No run batted in. Boy. Tough error. Costly error. Lum steps in, and he takes the ball inside. But just might have been a double play ball, even though Concepcion has good speed. Here's the stretch, and the 1-0 pitch. The runner at first goes. Pitch is high. Mitterwald does not throw. Concepcion's third stolen base of the ball game, and his 24th of the year.
Now, they're bringing uh, the infield in. Rosella coming up almost to the edge of the grass on the left side. Bobby Mercer is playing at second base. And with first base open now, they will walk Mike Lum to load him up. There's ball three. Now, Champ Summers, as we mentioned earlier, is still available on that bench. And the former Cub made the Cincinnati Reds ball club in spring training. And was so thrilled about it, he just couldn't get over it. He's going to pinch hit. He's four for 21 as a pinch hitter for Sparky Anderson this year. Fifteen to fourteen scores. Cincinnati leading. One gone. The bases are loaded. Infield in, hoping for a force play at the plate. Top of the batting order is up. For Champ Summers is up, and the pinch hitter takes the ball. A little low. Mudo Wall steps out says, You've got to fire strikes. No place to put this guy. He got behind on George Foster who opened this 12th inning with a double that just missed being a homer into the bleachers in right. And he's now scored the lead run. Here's the pitch. Swung on a miss. Good fastball. Then a walk to Johnny Bench. Got Geronimo, who could not sacrifice, on a fly ball to Bittner in left for the first out. And Concepcion, bunting, or on a check swing, rather, got it right out to the pitcher, Broberg, who was hopeful of starting a double play. But the shortstop did not handle the throw. Cross the air and let a run in. Now the bases are loaded with one out in the 12th. Broberg, from the stretch, delivers. Summers takes it high. Ball two, strike one. Champ for the year, eight hits and 42 at bats. Three of those eight hits are homers. And four runs butted in. Broberg's next pitch, a swing and a mess on a good fastball. He just blew it by him. Ball two, strike two. Champ steps out. It's a deep breath, exhales. Now sets himself back in the batter's box with a count of two and two. Base is jammed. Stretch Broberg's pitch. Summer swings and misses strike three. And there are two gone. But don't think we're out of the jam because here is Mr. Rose. Homered to lead off the ball game today. Singled in the third. Has reached on an air. He sacrificed, received an intentional walk. Well, he's two for five today. Johnny Bench over at third. At second is Concepcion. At first is Mike Lum. Pete Rose in the batter's box with 2,884 career hits. Tied for 20th in the all-time hit parade in the majors. Broberg's first pitch. Fastball. Rose takes it inside. Ball one. Come on, Pete. Put him away. Here's the pitch. Takes another ball. Low and inside. He's got to come in there. 2 and 0. Base is jammed in the bottom or in the top of the 12th. It's 15 14 Cincy. 
two-all pitch coming up to Rose is on its way, and it's a strike call to the outside corner. Ball two, strike one. This series has drawn 111,373. The largest attendance for a three-date series at Wrigley Field since the 1969 campaign. Paid attendance today, 32,155. With 33,286 total. And most of them still here. 2 1 pitch, Rose takes. Too low, ball, three strike one. He wants another baseball. Boy, what a dilemma. Banks is loaded with two off. And Pete Rose, the hitter, and you're behind him, three and one. You've got to come in or force in a run, and if you come in, you better have something on it. Broberg into the stretch, 3-1 pitch, Rose swings, and he misses. And he had something on it. A lone, solitary figure standing in the Cub bullpen area, Coach Barney Schultz. Trying to will Broberg to get Rose out. Right-hander in the hill. Runners go. 3-2 pitch. Swung out of this. We got him. And Rose flings that bat away and almost wound up at the wall. He's so hot. He strikes out Rose with the bases loaded in the 12th, but the Reds have come up with a run. On one hit. One costly error, two walks, one intentional. They leave the bases loaded. Second time they've left them loaded today. Smiling Harry Kraft, former great player, manager, now scouting, walking around the aisles. The Cubs coming to bat in the bottom of the 12th inning since he leads 15 to 14. If homeowners waited for inflation to turn around before they repaired or improved their homes, the old neighborhood might be a little more run down than you'd expect. So whether you're adding a room, building your garage, or putting in a new sidewalk, friendly Bob Adams understands there's a lot of people like you. So he's ready with your General Finance Corporation home repair loan. Call friendly Bob at Andover 32020. There's someone willing to listen, ready to help. You'll like the fast, famous, friendly Bob Adams service. And General Finance's courteous yet confidential manner. Friendly professionals who know about problems like yours. You'll be pleased at how simply and easily your loan can be arranged. All you have to do is pick up your money at your convenient General Finance office, then get started on your home improvement project. Call General Finance Corporation at Andover 32020. That's Andover 32020, where you can borrow up to $10,000. There are over 65 offices in the Chicagoland area. Also an office in Tinley Park. Well, we got to pause a moment here for station identification. This is the WGN Chicago Cubs Baseball Network. WGN Radio Chicago, 81 degrees at Midway Airport, two minutes before six. Well, Davy Rosello now has an opportunity to atone for dropping that throw from the pitcher Pete Broberg that could have prevented this Cincinnati club from taking the lead. He's facing Big Jack Bellingham. Takes the first pitch of strike. Holmes one to Concepcion, who makes the fake in time to first base, and there's one away. Yes, it's part of the game. Yes, errors are part of the ball game. There's no doubt about it. It's tough when they're they happen against you. Yeah, when they're so costly. Here's George Menowal. Still got a shot at him, and he takes Billingham's first pitch outside a ball. Freddie Norman could get the win. 
even up for the loss that he suffered in the first game of the series. There's a curve, and it's low, ball two. But it ain't over yet. Vince Lloyd and Lou Boudreau here at Wrigley Field with Al Ulrich, our engineer, and Jack Minovich, our producer. 2-0 pitch. Swing out. Hey. Deep drive. Left field. Stay fair. Stay fair. Oh, Chris. Oh, game is tied. Look at the wall. It's just set. No, sir. Not as many <laughs> thrills in the ball game. Tremendous ball game. That's got to tie the Major League record. 11 home runs in this ball game today. That ties the record in the Major. And Gene Klein steps in for the first time today. Takes the ball inside. George Minowal, bless his soul. Yes, sir, and Rosello will give him a fine thanks. Oh, Thank you, yeah. too. It takes yeah. him off the hook. There's a swing. He tried. Hey! Hey! Trying to get it off the bars. He just missed the bell ringer, but he's on with a double. Man, I thought that was going to go out of here. A double by Gene Twines in his first trip to the plate today. Oh, man. That's <laughs> Sparky Anderson just sat down. Uh, I can't believe it. <laughs> hey, I want to tell you, I can't either. Now, let's get him in. Dean hitting in that ninth spot when he came in. Here's Jose Cardinal. Come on, Jose, let's win it. Here's the pitch. Backs him away with a breaking ball, a slider that didn't break much. Jose, a pitch we owe for one today. He's played right field, he's played second base, he's played shortstop. Now he can play the hero's role with a base hit. He swings, bounces one to the third baseman, Rose, looks flies back to second, and Cardinal is on all fours. I was watching the ball in Rose, and he's just getting up. Yes, he's all right. I don't know what happened. Last time I saw that happen to a Cub was when Randy Hundley out at Los Angeles swung and hit a little dying quail in the center field, and we looked, and there he was on all fours. He wrecked that knee again. Never forget that. That was in the batter's box. Yeah. But Jose was out of the batter's box, so he might have just slipped. Hope so. He gets up and walks into the dugout. They get him out at first base. Lions is still at second, and they're two away. Now Larry Mitchell. He has three hits today. Oh, man. Six, he swing, and he went too far. So the plate up fire also. Struck one. Tell Bittner Berg wants to get on for at least an hour, anyhow. <laughs> he could still come out to the ballpark. He could. Know? He's got yeah, time. Yeah, we could wrap it up for a half hour. to there. No. One pitch, swung on, and he drives it foul on the right field line. Well, I know we won't have any trouble summarizing this in about 30 seconds when it's all over. Yeah, we have to have a quick wrap-up. <laughs> Minovich always wants a quick wrap-up. 
I say, you wrap this one up and work it and come out here. <laughs> the scoreboard says we got 21 hits. I guess that's right. The score tied at 15. Dillingham sinkers low. Ball one, strike two. Big one-hander ready. Here's the pitch. Swung on, driving the center field. It is caught. Geronimo hauled it in. Oh, here we go again. The Cubs in the ninth inning with two outs, nobody on, tied up the ball game. In the twelfth inning, with one out, George Mitterwald, second home run of the day, ties it. We leave the winning run stranded on a liner to the center fielder. Well, we're now going in to the 13th inning at Wrigley Field. Would you believe that? It's Cincinnati, 15 runs, 18 hits. The Cubs, 15 runs and 21 hits. We'll be back. When you brew a beer once, you've got a good beer. But when you brew a beer twice, you've got a great beer light beer. A great light beer called Old Style from God's Country. Heilemann's Old Style is brewed in a traditional old world way called coisoning. Coisoning is the most natural way to brew beer and the most expensive. Most expensive because it takes more time. But Heilemann has been brewing beer this way since we first opened our doors back in 1853. Coisoning is what makes Old Style the great light beer it is today. Taste the difference Coisoning makes. Try Old Style. Pure brewed in God's country. G. Harlem and Green Company, La Crosse, Wisconsin. The 11 homers hit here today ties a major league record by both clubs in one game. Now Mercer is going over to shortstop and Rosetta over to second with a left-handed hitter, Ken Griffey, in there. Bittner and Adebaris have been at the corners of the infield all day. Broberg's first pitch swung out. Deep drive, left field. Bittner back. It is bouncing around and... It is in play. It is a double. And here comes Sparky Anderson out again. All fire, the third base up fire, says it is in play off the top of the wall. And Sparky out of there wants to question Doug Harvey. He does very briefly, whatever Harvey said, sends Sparky back to the dugout. Griffey just missed. A homer, that would have been a major league record. As it is, he opens up with his fifth. As it is, he opens up with his fifth hit of the day. Bittner went back there. He turned his back to the infield. He was afraid that it might go over the wall, but it did not. Thank heaven. It hit right on top. That's something. No big beef by Sparky when he went out. Morgan steps in. He bounces a foul. Up against the wall on the first base side. Well, in the 12th inning, Foster opened up with a double that just missed a homer. The opposite side, and now Griffey opens up the 13th with a double the opposite side that just missed. Morgan gets under that one. It's a high foul middle wall. May have a play. He does. He circles back, and he's got it. Morgan fouls out to the catcher. Little Joe doesn't look very happy as he goes back to the dugout. Guarantee you he wasn't happy in the 11th inning on a hot shot. 
of which Bittner made a super sensational diving stop on the ball after it had hit once in fair territory, bounced over the bag, and he made a dive and hauled it in and then got to his feet and won the race to the bag, and there was a big argument about the whole thing, whether it was fair or foul or anything. Now, time is called, and Rick Russell, who shut out the Cincinnati Reds, his second straight shutout victory here at the ballpark, is throwing in the Cub bullpen, and apparently they want him, Lou, to get ready to face Foster, huh? Well, no, I just think that uh, he's there to loosen up. He's due to uh, to start Saturday uh, night in Houston. Yeah. So if the Cubs can hold them in and get a one-run lead, I, I think he'll be used to protect that lead. But I don't think that they will use him uh, in a losing cause, in other words, you see. Yeah. But I don't know what's on uh, Lowry's mind. Uh, he's talking, of course, to Broberg now. Uh, you've got Foster or Bench. So who do you want to pitch to or what are you going to do? take the percentage, put Foster on, the leading RBI hitter in the National League, uh, and try for a double play with Bench, hopefully. Yeah. And he'll hit a ground ball. And then again, you got to think of uh, the double play combination. <laughs> You've got Mercer now moving from shortstop to second base. Yeah, they so, flip-flop depending on whether it's a right-handed or left-handed hitter in there. Everybody uh, has been used... In the among the infielders, outfielders, with the sole exception of Steve Swisher, and they're going to put Foster on, and maybe they can get uh, Johnny Bench to hit into a double play. So far, Bench today has uh, hit a three-run homer, walked three times, lined hard to Bittner and left. Flied out to Mercer when he was in right field, and he struck out. This is the second time this year that the Cubs at home have had a 13-inning affair. But the other one, which was with Montreal, was nothing, nothing, nothing like this barn burner. Reds with 19 hits, the Cubs with 21. There have been a total of 11 home runs hit here today. Three by the Reds in the first inning, two by the Cubs in the first inning. That tied a major league inning uh, record for homers in an inning. Now, Mitterwald's shot in the bottom of the 12th that tied the ball game is the 11th of the day, and that ties another major league record. Total home runs. In one game by two teams, 11. The walk issued to Foster. They've got runners at first and second with the one out, and now Penis Lowry coming out of that dugout again, and by golly, Lou, he's going to go to Russell. Yes, he is. Giving the big guy time to warm up down there, and he's going to face Johnny Bench. Now, this makes sense because he throws that good sinker ball. And if he's got it, of course, working properly, chances are he can get Bench to hit one into the dirt right at an infielder. And maybe we can come up with a double play. He's going to get a big hand as he comes in from the bullpen. This is his second relief appearance in this season. Rick Russell, the Cubs' seventh pitcher of the ball game. The score in the 13th inning. Still tied. Since he 15, the Cubs 15. We'll be back in a minute. When you brew a beer in God's country, you begin with sparkling pure Wisconsin spring water. Water that flows deep beneath the ground. Then you pure brew, double brew it in a traditional old world way called poisoning. Poisoning is the most natural way to brew beer and the most expensive. Most expensive because it takes more time. But Hyleman's Old Style is one American premium beer that is still fully, that's fully poisoned, naturally carbonated. Because at Old Style, we don't aim to make the most beer. Only the best. 
Taste the difference Croisley makes. Try old style. Pure blue in God's country. G. Holloman Brewing Company, La Crosse, Wisconsin. who shut him out of the first game. Got his work cut out for him. He throws a couple of pitches. That's it up. I'm all right. Now, recall back in this ball game someplace, I'm not going to say, look back at my scorecard and tell you when, uh, although I, I think it was in the ninth inning, when an intentional walk was given up to set up a double play, Sparky Anderson countered with a double steal. Yes, and that's how did. they would break up yeah. that particular idea of the Cubs. They'll have to be conscious of that possibility. There's the pitch, a swing and a miss. Kept it down around his knees, and Bench just twirled around in the batter's box, trying to get a hold of it. Johnny, with a three-run homer in the first inning, has only hit so far today. Rex delivery. Checks his swing. And it's a ball low and away. Cubs don't ask for an appeal. Ball one, strike one. The Dodgers knocked off Philadelphia, two to one. Here's a stretch, sidearm fastball up to him, and he fouled it back. Came right up to the shoulders. All one, strike two. Johnny taking his time getting back in there. The go-ahead run, Ken Griffey. Exceptional speed, he's at second. George Foster, the runner at first base. This game is tied at 15 apiece. Yeah, I know you'd be shocked. One away. Rick's pitch. Bench swings, ground ball. Deep. Two out of airs, goes to second. Mercer's relay. Too high. He is safe at first base. And Grippy is over at third. And Bobby Mercer went... I don't know. I hope he's not hurt. There's the... You got Bobby at second base, of course, and he's not going to be the most agile second baseman in the world. I'm even surprised he was able to get rid of that ball, Lou. He did a good job in getting rid of that ball. Had something on it. And only because Foster slid into him, I think, he just couldn't put a little extra on that yeah. uh, baseball. Started to sail on him a little bit. So they missed the double play. Now, Rosello and Russell are looking that I got. Now, where do you want me, Davis? Is on shortstop side or second base side? Because you have a left-handed batter in there, Geronimo, but he doesn't always go to right field. He hits the opposite side a lot. And if they draw a throw to second base, where would it be yeah. best for Rosello to take the throw if Mitterwald throws through? But I doubt very much whether Mitterwald will throw through or not in this particular situation. You don't want to throw that ball around too often. If you do, somebody's going to make a bad throw and you're going to score a run or move up the runners. Yeah. Bench on at first with the fielder's choice. They're two gone in the 15th. And they're uh, not paying any attention to Bench. Buckner deep at first base. Oh, and pitch yeah. into the dirt. Meadowalt scrambles and Griffey does not advance from third. Nice, nice play by Meadowalt. That could easily have been a wild pitch. Back up in the hill with two gone in the 13th inning, tied at 15. Vince Lloyd and Lou Boudreau here with you. Wow, what a ball game. Here's a stretch. Geronimo swings. Bouncing ball to Buckner. He's got it right near the bag, and the side is retired on an unassisted ground out. And Rick Russell comes in and does the job. Now, wouldn't it be something if the Cubs could get a run in the bottom of the inning? And Rick would have two victories over the Reds in this series. That's not too hard to take, is it? 
Let's see if it'll happen. Bottom of the 13th at Wrigley Field. Tied, Cincy, 15, the Cubs 15. You know lawns come in many shapes and sizes. So do lawn chink mowers from True Value Hardware Store. They offer a complete line of gas and electric power mowers and heavy-duty lawn tractors in sizes from every type of lawn from a small city lot to a sprawling country estate. For average-sized lawns, they offer rotary mowers and self-propelled models with 18 to 22-inch cutting widths, plus a high wheel power for rough, bumpy areas and a rear bagger model that mows easily in narrow places. To cut big lawns down to size, you'll find lawn chief riding mowers and heavy-duty tractors with 25 and 36-inch cutting widths, forward and reverse speeds, and many other features. True Value Hardware Stores own their own lawn chief mower factory, where they design and manufacture their lawn chief mowers to exacting standards with performance, convenience, and user safety in mind. So no matter what size lawn you own, you'll find a matching lawn chief mower exclusively at participating True Value Hardware Stores. Well, Jack Billingham, who's normally one of their starters, as is Freddie Norman, is working his second inning in relief, and he will face Bill Buckner, Bobby Mercer, Jerry Morales. Let's hope it'll only be one, huh? Let's see, are they making some changes? Yeah, I think they are. Oh, it's Joe Geronimo in center. Griffey in right. Foster in left. Mike Lum, first base, Morgan at second, Concepcion at short, and Pete Rose at third with Johnny Bench behind the plate. The big wide hander, Billingham, delivers to Buckner, takes a fastball high, bottom of the 13th inning. Been 40 hits out here today, 11 of them homers, 6 by the Cubs, and 2 by George Minowal. 2 by Buckner. 1-0 pitch, swung out, bouncing ball, Concepcion charging in. Near the bag, he has it, throws to first, and Buckner, limping down the line, is out. One away. I've got to say, he's got a very sore leg right now, though. Yes. It's, yes, indeed. That's a cross in front of the plate, going onto the dugout. Bobby Mercer, who homered in the first inning, as did Buckner, steps in. Bobby with three hits today, and he's played at second base, shortstop, right field. First pitch, he takes, it's a strike. This has to be one of the craziest games of all time. Cardinal has played second at short in the outfield. Billingham misses low and away, ball one, strike one. Both benches pretty well depleted. Cubs using Rick Russell in relief. They've used Norman, now Billingham, who misses high. Ball two, strike one. The good news from the West Coast, the Dodgers defeated the Philadelphia Phillies 2-1. to 2-1 to one delivery. Goes after it. It's a high fly ball, right center field, hit pretty well. Griffey coming over, center fielders there, Geronimo. Grabs it on the warning track in deep right center, and Mercer limping a little bit. As he was uh, banged up, there's a middle man on the attempted double play in the top of the inning. He's going back in the dugout. Two gone, bases empty in the 13th. The batter, Rick Russell. Did I say Morales a while ago? I guess I did. He's long out of here. He had a homer back in the eighth inning. Bellingham's first pitch, a swing and a miss and a slider. Rick came out of relief in the top of the inning. 0-1 delivery. 
looks at the ball outside, one and one. Red Sox crush Milwaukee today, 12 to nothing. And the Yankees bomb Baltimore 14 to 2. As a swing and a line drive, base hit for Rick Russell. With two gone in the 13th, the Cubs have a shot at winning it, and Steve out of Ayers will be the batter. It was Steve in the ninth inning who tied up the ball game. After two men were retired, Mercer singled, Morales drew a walk, out of Ayers singled to tie it up. And then in the 12th inning, Mitterwall again tied it up with his second home run of the year, of the day. <laughs> it only seems like a year. Now out of Ayers has a chance to win it. Cincinnati dugout, they're trying to get somebody's attention to move them around, but I didn't see anybody, any field to move. Dillingham's first pitch, he gets a curve in there. They don't have too many men in that dugout. Oh, no, they don't. <laughs> the, the coaches, they've got four or five coaches over there. I wonder if they got the bus waiting for them out here. This is their travel date, of course. 0 1 pitch. Jexy swing, it's a ball. Ball one, strike one. Well, we're moving now towards the five hour mark in this ballgame. 13th inning, tied at 15 apiece. Dillingham's next pitch, fastball, and the big guy misses outside. Ball two, strike one. Cubs with 22 base hits. Is that right? Yeah, sure. That's right. 22, yeah. yeah. Curveball, that he can't find the strike zone with that one, it's five. Three of those hits have come off Billingham. 3-1 pitch. Swung on and fouled off of Johnny Bench. That's all he needs. A few more foul balls to hit him. <laughs> hey, and Minerwald had done all the catching today. Eleven homers have tied a major league record. Five homers in the first inning by these two teams tied a major league record. 3-2 pitch. Russell goes. Base hit in the right field. Charging it is Griffey. Russell going to third. And Lowry says that's as far as you can go. Out of Ayers pulls a single in the right. Come on, Davey. Win it right here. Davey Rosello will be the batter. Shortstop second baseman in this game. He grounded out in the 12th inning against Billingham. Bill Bird wants to know if it's safe for him to go home. Well, that depends on... Uh, how many enemies you got, Bill? <laughs> Second round. Here's the swing base hit. Hey! Pick that one and then Russell up to the line with his arms up. Raise his fist front. Middle wall. Hunt him as he steps to the plate. The Cubs have bailed it out in an unbelievable ball game. Oh, man. Look at that jubilation down there. I don't think I've ever seen Rick Russell do show as much emotion as he did when he came up the line to score the winning run. His arms upraised, his fists clenched, then Mitterwald hugged him, and look at those guys go. No worryness right now, man. They are happy and light-footed as they go down to the clubhouse. Sharp contrast for the Cincinnati Reds. They led after a half inning of play, six to nothing. They lose the ball game, 16 to 15. Can you believe that? And little Davy Rosello for the second time this year 
drives in the winning run of the ball game. With two out of the 13th and nobody out, it happened again. A single by Russell, a single by Adebayas, a game-winning single by Davey Rosello. And the unbelievable 1977 Cubs continue to be unbelievable. A run on three hits. Two men left on the bases. Cubs won at 16 to 15. We'll be back after this. Some autographs are surprisingly valuable. For example, the signature of Button Gwinnett, one of the signers of the Declaration of Independence, is worth far more than that of any other signer. And ladies, your name is worth a lot more, too, according to friendly Bob Adams of General Finance Corporation. Now your signature is all it takes to get a loan at General Finance. A lot of women and a lot of families have borrowed wisely from them. They were made to feel at home by friendly professionals who understood the need of nearly everybody to borrow at one time or another. Now at General Finance, any person has an excellent chance to borrow up to $10,000 for all kinds of reasons. A vacation, unexpected expenses, or consolidation of bills, for example, on their signature alone. So call Friendly Bob of General Finance at Andover 32020. That's Andover 32020. And remember, your Jane Hancock is very valuable at General Finance. There are over 65 offices in the Chicagoland area. Also an office in Addison. Well, I'm going to tell you. <laughs> how, how do you summarize one like this in just a moment or two, huh? There's just no way in the world. You're down, if in the first place you're down six to nothing, right off the bat. And then all of a sudden, you got four of those runs back. And then the next thing you know, you're in overtime. You're trailing by a run in the ninth inning with two out and nobody on. You tie it up. You're trailing in the 12th inning. You tie it up. You're trailing in the 13th inning. You've got two out and nobody on base. And you wind up winning the ball game. Well, let me tell you, to me, Lou, that is typical of what this ball club has done so many times this year. They just, by golly, will not give up.